This is a game, nothing to lose, so much to prove. The hockey world knows all about him. He is a superstar. This is a game where they can get their name back out there to all the scouts and GM. Now it's a best on best from all over the country and you get your chance to shine. Anytime you get to uh, gather the top the top uh, CHL prospects, I think it's just a lot of fun to watch. If you're here against the top players within our league and you want to showcase yourself. You see all the guys coming out of Mo Canada. They were like the best in the league. Playing against Alexis for the first time will be really cool. You know, you play with the best and uh, against the best. We are born to rise. We are at the First Ontario Centre in Hamilton, Ontario for the Kubota CHL-NHL Top Prospects game. Hamilton, home of the Bulldogs, OHL champions two seasons ago. Steve Steos and owner Michael Andlauer developing an outstanding program here. And tonight, this will be a real treat. And here's a couple of highlight names. We'll start with Team White. There's Alexi Lafreniere. We're of the Ramuski Oceanic. He will captain Team White, start at the World Juniors. Plenty on him this evening. A total threat, the QMJHL Rookie of the Year, etc. There's Caden Gooley of the Prince Albert Raiders, first overall in the WHL draft in 2017. His older brother plays with the Buffalo Sabres. We saw him last year at the Memorial Cup. Sudbury Wolves Center, there he is, big Quinton Byfield. He'll captain Team Red, World Junior Gold. Comparisons to players like Malkin and Shifley. This is a large and highly skilled young man. Ottawa 67s. Marco Rossi, he's the leading scorer in the OHL, 74 points in 32 games. He might be small in stature, only 5'9", but super high-end skill, plays the full rink game. One of the top players on the top team in the entire CHL. Welcome inside the arena. Jeff Merrick along with you. We'll bring the panel on here in a couple of moments. RJ Broadhead, Sam Constantino here as always. And hosting the event ringside is Tara Sloan from Rogers Hometown Hockey. In a lot of ways, the NHL draft last season was about the United States Development Program. But this year, it's the return of the CHL. The draft this year is in Montreal in late June. Get used to these names because you'll hear many of them called and the majority of them in the first round. Let's bring on the panel. To my immediate left, Colby Armstrong, former Red Deer Rebel, and to his left, Todd Warner, former Windsor Spitfire and Kitchener Ranger. It's being positioned as Team White versus Team Red, but we really know this is Team Lafreniere versus Team Byfield. We'll start with the star from Ramuski. Yeah, Alexi Lafreniere, how long have we heard about this guy's name? And he's been racking up awards since he entered the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Uh, he leads the league in scoring this year, despite playing 34 games, like quite a long way away <laughs> from the rally in second place. But we saw his World Junior Tournament as well, Jeff, MVP of the tournament. Uh, 10 points, four goals, and five games over there. Um, he's a he's a total package player. He's a guy that can make plays. He's a game breaker. He's got speed. He uses his body well. He's physical. He's got that shot. And I think after that World Junior Tournament, guys, I think there was a little bit of a separation possibly mm. on Byfield. Now, the interesting thing about that point, and many have made it, is that Quinton Byfield is almost a full year younger than Alexi Lafreniere. Yeah, 11 months younger. For me, that's significant. And who wouldn't want a six foot four, 215 pound centerman different from Lafreniere in that regard? So there has been some separation based on Lafreniere's play at the World Junior Tournament. Then you know this guy wants to make his statement tonight and get back in the conversation. And his coach in Sudbury, Corey Stillman, just named him an assistant captain. He takes the puck to the net, he could score. He's on a 110 point pace, and how many players wow. have done that in their draft here? So I look for this guy, make a statement tonight in this game, try and get back in the conversation for June's draft. Hey, he, he is huge. Yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, you look down on it, he is. A, a lot of room to grow he's into a big, it too. Yeah, he's he a big boy, yep. So a uh, big guy, can move his feet, can score, What's wears like? 55. Yeah. Does he remind anyone of someone in Winnipeg by the name yeah. Shifley? But those aren't the only two stars here tonight. Let's go down to Tara Sloan, who's standing by with Dawson Mercer. 
actually, Jeff, I have a story about Dawson. To say it has been a whirlwind season for him is a bit of an understatement. First in October, his draft ranking is revised from a B to an A. Fast forward to December, he makes the World Junior Squad. He takes home a gold medal. He's only the third player in Newfoundland and Labrador history to do so. As you can imagine, his hometown of Bay Roberts, Newfoundland is over the moon. His social calendar is absolutely overflowing. So here's one request he could not refuse. When six-year-old Beth Dawson asked Dawson, uh, asked, was asked what she wanted to do for show and tell, she said she wanted to bring Dawson Mercer in. So he obliged. He brought his gold medal and himself to Mrs. Noseworthy's class at Collies Point Primary School. This is the same school that Dawson attended when he was a kid. And RJ and Sam, I really don't see Dawson Mercer's schedule clearing up anytime soon. No, no, he has turned into a superstar and one of the nicest young men here from Bay Roberts, Newfoundland. Really fun to talk to, and he's enjoying every minute of it, and he should. A lot of these players are. They look back to last year, I'm sure, and see the 12 players who took part in the Kubota CHL-NHL Top Prospects game were taken in the first round in the NHL draft. We know Jamie Drysdale will be taken in the first round, probably the first defenseman taken. What do you like best about his game? Well, it starts with his feet. He has elite feet, and then he applies those on both ends of the ice. When I look at him offensively over a point per game with the Erie Otters, he's been challenged by his coach, Chris Hartsburg, this year to be elite every night, and I think we saw that. He stepped up his game in the limited minutes he played at the World Juniors, but what I like most about this guy is he processes the game so well that the feet match the brain when he goes back He's using his feet defensively. That opens up a little bit time for him to process and make a really good decision. He can skate it out. He can pass it out. And he is one of these guys that I think mistake-free hockey is a nice descriptor for him. Skilled hockey, intelligent hockey would probably describe Cole Perfetti. Only six games this season with Saginaw has he not recorded a point. He's never done it in back-to-back -back games where he hasn't registered a point. So he has been very consistent. Tell us about Cole Perfetti and what we can expect tonight. Well, it's crazy because last year he put up 37 goals as a 16-year-old, and the goals were tough to come by. Yes, he was putting up points that you talked about, but goals were tough to come by. So you know what? I'm going to hone my game and make it a little bit different this year. I'm going to be a little bit more of a playmaker. Well, he got snuffed what he thought from the World Junior Team. In the 11 games since that time on December 13th, he has put up 24 points, just terrorizing the Ontario Hockey League. His ability to anticipate, to read the play, allows him a lot of odd man and breakaway chances. We'll see if he can get away from the pack in this game. The top nine ranked North American skaters, according to Central Scouting, will take part in this game. So, so many stories, and we're looking forward to getting to them, Jeff. Uh, yes, indeed. This is a deep, deep roster on both sides, white and red. We're close to puck drop. Let's turn things over to PA announcer Aaron Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Team White. From the Sherbrooke Phoenix, number 31, Samuel Levi. From the Kamloops Blazers, number 32, Dylan Garan. From the Brandon Wheat Kings, number two, Braden Schneider. From the Red Deer Rebels, number four, Christopher Setoff. From the Prince Albert Raiders, number six, Caden Gooley. From the Rimouski Oceanique, number 11, Alexi Lafreniere. From the Windsor Spitfires, number 13, Will Cooley. From the Brandon Wheat Kings, number 17, Bradley Gregg. From the Kamloops Blazers, number 18, Connor Zeri. From the North Bay Battalion, number 20, Brandon Coe. From the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, number 21, Ryan O'Rourke.
from the Shawinigan Cadillac, number 22, Maverick Bork. From the Sudbury Wolves, number 23, Jack Thompson. From the Portland Winterhawks, number 24, Seth Jarvis. From the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, number 26, Yarmir Pedlik. From the Cape Breton Eagles, number 42, Ryan Francis. From the Calgary Hitmen, number 60, Luke Brokaw. From the Barry Colts, number 71, Tyson Forster. From the Saginaw Spirit, number 91, Cole Perfetti. And from the Shawinigan Cadillac, number 92, Vasily Ponomarev. And now, introducing Team Red. From the Moose Jaw Warriors, number 33, Brock Gould. From the Guelph Storm, number 35, Nico Dawes. From the Erie Otters, number four, Jamie Drysdale. From the Swift Current Broncos, number seven, Casper Pudio. From the Prince Albert Raiders, number nine, Ozzy Weisblatt. From the London Knights, number 14, Luke Evangelista. From the Shakutami Saguenet, number 19, Dawson Mercer. From the Edmonton Oil Kings, number 21, Jake Neighbors. From the Ottawa 67s, number 22, Jack Quinn. From the Ottawa 67s, number 23, Marco Rossi. From the Spokane Chiefs, number 26, Jack Finley. From the Kitchener Rangers, number 37, Donovan Sobrengo. From the London Knights, number 40, Antonio Strongis. From the Vancouver Giants, number 42, Justin Sorden. From the Sarnia Sting, number 44, Jacob Perot. From the Charlottetown Islanders, number 51, Lucas Cormier. From the St. John Sea Dogs, number 54, Jeremy Poirier. From the Sudbury Wolves, number 55, Quinton Byfield. From the Drummondville Voltigeur, number 78, Timo Nickel. And from the Windsor Spitfires, number 93, Jean-Luc Foody. At this time, please welcome our official party for tonight's ceremonial puck drop. Representing title partner Kubota Canada, 
please welcome Executive Vice President and Treasurer, Toru Hoshino. Representing the Canadian Hockey League, please welcome President Dan McKenzie. And representing your Hamilton Bulldogs, please welcome President and General Manager Steve Steos. Would Alexi Lafreniere from Team White and Quinton Byfield from Team Red please skate to center ice for our ceremonial puck drop? Ladies and gentlemen, would you now please rise if you are able to and remove your hats for the American and Canadian national anthems as performed by Sienna Rose. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam Who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watch, we're so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof. Was outstanding. Uh, moments away from puck drop here. Last year, this game was held in Red Deer. The star of that night, Connor McMichael, with the game-winning goal. Then of the London Knights, drafted first round by the Washington Capitals. Who will be the star tonight? Maybe this young man, Alexi Lafreniere, with Tara Sloan. Alexi, this year for any draft eligible player is a very busy one, but for you, it's been exceptionally busy. How are you able to conserve your energy so you're ready for moments like this? Uh, just try to focus on uh, myself and on uh, trying to get better um, every day and, uh, you know, for sure, uh, resting when I can. And uh, I think it's going to be a good game tonight, so it's fun to be here. 
the main storyline going into this is pinning number one versus number two. Who will it be? Quinton says he's really looking forward to playing against you. What are you looking forward to about playing against him? Uh, for sure, it's the first time we play against. We played together, uh, you know, for World Juniors, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting to play against him. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be a really fun game. Love the smile on your face. Good luck tonight. Up to RJ Broadhead and Sam Cosentino, guys. Alexi Lafreniere. Great season for him. Currently ranked number one. Here are the starting goalies brought to you by Cavendish Farms, the official French fry of the Canadian Hockey League. And just before the players came out, we received news that the number one ranked goaltender in North America, that's Nico Dodds. He won't play due to an upper body injury, so it looks like the game will be Brock Gould. He's 18 years old from Colorado Springs. Now with Moose Jaw, he was traded from Victoria. He's made 16 appearances this season. In goal for Team White, it's Samuel Halavai. He's 18-year-old. He's an import from Slovakia, the number three ranked goaltender in North America, and he is the number one goalie in the QMJHL. Number one in goals against, save percentage, shutouts, and he's won 79% of his games. So many great players, but one player that you've really noticed is Braden Schneider. Why do you like him? Well, I love him going back to the Canada-Russia series, going back to the World Junior Camp. I love the way he skates. Got some old-school bite to him, but some offensive upside. He'll be a fun guy to watch in this game. Was sick early on. Looks like he's ready to rock here tonight. Team White versus Team Red. The Kubota CHL NHL top prospects game is underway, and the two captains are out there. Alexi Lafreniere in white and Quinton Byfield and his team in red. They came in with the first chance, but that shot from Jake Neighbors was knocked out of play. Yeah, I really like the elements that this line has, and it starts with Jake Neighbors, who plays that power forward position for the Edmonton Oil Kings, can really shoot the puck well, but a guy who doesn't mind bumping the body and getting under the op opposition skin. Braden Schneider locates the puck in the corner and advances it to the blue line, but Seth Jarvis could get no further than that. Jeremy Poirier stepped up right there. The St. John Sea Dog made a good defensive play. Lafreniere drops it off for Maverick Fort. Tries to get it banked for Lafreniere and uses that strength. That's a big part of his game, his physical play. Able to get it back to the point. Caden Gooley just missed with his shot. Maverick Fort could show in again. Back to Schneider. That shot's off a stick. Goes to the corner. Seth Jarvis having a great year with Portland. Drops it off for Schneider, who's jumped into the play. Behind the net, open is Bork. Gets it over to Lafreniere. He'll head toward the blue line. Decides to pass it over to Schneider. He's got a lane. Quite a shot. That was knocked away by Jake Neighbors. And finally, Team Red gets to it. Byfield advances it to Mercer. He took a hit. Yeah, that was some hard work for Team Red just to get the puck into Team White's hand. And a good job by Team White. Several retrievals off the shot. Sent around to the near side, Lucas Cormier. He couldn't connect. Braden Schneider's been out there a while, so he was able to get it up to Connor Zeri. Zeri tried to get a shot through, got it to Ridley Craig, and that rolls to Gould, and he covers it. Right. Well, it was interesting before the game, Lafreniere and Byfield had a little meeting at center ice. They talked, they said hello, but once it's game on, it's a little bit different. Coming up the ice, Lafreniere targets Byfield. Hit, regains possession of the puck for Team White. No friends in this game. Jacob Perot. Got to keep a close watch on him. Number 44 for Team Red. Fastest skater in the testing. Connor Zary comes back. He's got the most points of any WHL player at this event. Plays with Kamloops. Got it ahead to Brandon's Ridley Gregg. He's taken care of immediately by Cormier. And some nice passing by Team Red. Gets them out to center ice. Coming back is Tyson Forrester. Plays with Barry. He's from Alliston, and he's got about 30 friends and family here. So if he does something, there'll be a big cheer. Long shot in on Gould. He handles it nicely, knocks it to the corner. Donovan Sablanco, the Kitchener Rangers defenseman, got it up to the blue line, and then it was knocked into the bench. If you watch the top of the broadcast, Jeff Merrick in the panel talking about this being the Quinton Byfield against the Alexi Lafreniere game. And here they are at center ice. Hey, bud, how you doing? Yeah, not bad. Glad you got a gold medal. Me too. And here they are at the ceremonial face-off. Hey, you want it? No, you take it. All right. Okay, I'll take it, says Alexi. You're the number one guy. He gets the puck. 
And he probably won't win a lot of faceoffs tonight. <laughs> He's a winger. Playing on the wing. Paul Perfetti, 11 game point streak. Waits till the defense converged on him, made the pass, and got it back. Back at the blue line, Luke Prokop. He gets it across to his defense partner. Shot came in wide of the net. This is not to the line. Prokop breaks that up immediately. Ryan O'Rourke, the captain of Sault Ste. Marie. 17 year old captain shows you what a leader he is. Quick shot from Jean Luc Foudy, and the first shot on Sam Halavai is handled nicely. Halavai plays with Sherbrooke. They're the number one team in the QMJHL. <laughs> team White seems to be dictating the play early. Caden Gooley, top ranked WHL player in this event, got a shot through. The Prince Albert Raider gets it back. Another shot attempt. That time, too much traffic to get it through. And coming through center ice is Jamie Drysdale. Gets it to Antonio Stronches. He got a hard shot, but Alibi has it. Yeah, Team White really has Team Red on its heels right now. And they're doing a great job working low to high, D to D, getting shots on goal and getting excellent retrieval. So Jamie Drysdale says, I've had enough of this. He decides to initiate the rush here for Team Red. Dishes it off to Stronges, which is never a bad idea. And that forces a good stop by Goul. Puck intercepted middle of the ice by Luke Evangelista, but he had no time. That was Schneider who closed on him. A good start for Brayton Schneider, both offensively and defensively. Jeremy Poirier, he can provide the offense. Third in defenseman scoring in the QMJHL with 35 points. Evangelista behind the net. Got everybody to bite on the move, and then he gets it back to the line, and Poirier scores! Jeremy Poirier of St. John opens the scoring tonight. If you watch the St. John Sea Dogs at all this year, you wouldn't be surprised by the offensive prowess of Jeremy Poirier, a good skater. Doesn't mind being caught up ice every once in a while, but here in his defensive post is the benefactor of a Luke Evangelista pass, and I don't know if Halibai saw it, to, or saw it properly, fooled rather. And as a result, Poirier puts it in, and <laughs> off it goes. It's Halavai in goal there. Just doesn't see it properly. The way he waved at it with his glove, I don't know if it was tipped on the way or not, but he didn't get a good look at it in any case. Poirier, no stranger to putting up points. He and Jamie Drysdale, both the 35 points, most of any defenseman here at this event. Coming back to line, retrieve that, that puck was Maverick Bork, and he saw Lafreniere's open. Middle of the ice, Seth Jarvis tried to make his way to the front of the goal, but coming over was Neighbors to knock it away. Cormier over to the open side, Dawson Mercer. Played with Drummondville, just traded to Shakutami. He hasn't even been to Shakutami yet, so he's got some uh, new teammates to meet up with. Long shot in on Gould, big rebound, and he's able to find it now. I think Mercer will be pretty happy with the crowds in Shikudami. They'll be fired up with the team that they now have moving forward for Yannick Jean. And a good job here by Jake Neighbors who comes back defensively. And that's something that scouts are always taking a notice of. Right? Yes, you can score and you can put up points. That's how you get noticed. But you also get noticed with details and defending. Neighbors down low comes back defensively to help out. Donovan Sobrango. Moves it ahead to Perot. He gets around one check. Tried to cut to the middle of the ice. And anyone who's a fan of the Sarnia Sting knows that Perot can have that puck on a string and win a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles. He's got to wear that bubble, which he doesn't like a whole lot. Got a broken nose, so he'll have to wear that for a while. Thanks to Mark Woolley out in Owen Sound. There's a big hit. Ridley Gregg of the Brandon Wheat Kings threw the hit on Sobrango. So now the physical play kicks in. Behind the net, Connor Zeri shields the puck, gets it back to O'Rourke at the blue line. That's off a stick. Goes wide of the goal. Almost came in front. Gould was careful with the paddle down. Luke Prokop, he lost that in there, and Gould spotted it and stopped it. I talked to Ridley Gregg in the morning skate this morning. He said, well, 
I got to jump in with both feet for this hockey game and no doubt he did that. Sobrango turns up his shoulder checks quickly and then he drops his head to look down at the puck and the second he does that Greg of the Brandon Wheat Kings drives him into the boards big bump on Donovan Sobrango. Great celebration for David Branch last night. He has stepped aside as CHL president, still the OHL commissioner, but he was instrumental in those big suspensions that have got rid of a lot of the dangerous hits. And that hit by Greg was perfect. You gotta like that. It still a, should be a big part of the game. Cole Perfetti, a slight break, and Jamie Drysdale. It's tough to get in front of him and get a chance. Didn't happen. There's a shot from Caden Gooley, and the defensemen are off to a good offensive start. The Prince Albert Raider, Gooley, ties it. Team White has done a really good job in being able to maintain zone time here. So here's Perfetti, he gets checked, but he doesn't give up on the play. He regains possession of the puck, spins around, and he finds Gooley sneaking down to the top of the circle. From there, Gooley rips it and beats Gould. But how about the effort by Perfetti? Stick checked on his way in. You know he wanted to take it to the net, but rather than stop and give up on the play, he regains possession. They get it back to the point to Gooley scores. Puck turned over. Francis made the pass, and that was a good save by Brock Gould. A good chance for Team White to take the lead. Will Cooley, he was in tight. The Windsor Spitfire couldn't beat Gould, so that's a nice bounce back immediately for Brock Gould after allowing a goal. Sometimes it's nice not to have time to recover. You just get thrown right back into the fire. A good response there by the Moose Jaw Gould. Cooley pokes at the puck. Here's Antonio Strangis. London Knight. He got an assist on that first goal for Team Ram. Way ahead of the play was Evangelista in a race for it. That is won by Christopher Setoff. So it's icing. We'll take a break. The defensemen have scored. Aurier and Gooley. It's time here in Hamilton. George Burnett is the head coach of Team White, but in league play is the head coach of the Guelph Storm, currently third in the Midwest Division of the Ontario Hockey League, five points behind the Kitchener Rangers for first place. His goaltender plays for Team Red, and here's Dawes in the warm-up. He's taken a few shots and ends up looking rather gingerly on his way to the bench. J.P. Lasik is the Hamilton Bulldogs trainer. They have a conversation, and it's ruled that Dawes, with an upper body injury, will not be able to participate in this game, and that's too bad because He's the first ranked goaltender by National Hockey League Central Scouting in the midterm rankings and the guy who was really looking to avenge what he thought was a just a mediocre performance of the World Juniors. Yeah, and it certainly wasn't his fault that performance. He was great on such a mm -hmm. run. So fun to watch because he gets himself in great position, but we hope that Nico Dawes is healthy and he'll get in there for the golf storm. George Burnett and the storm need him. Really wanted to tell his story. Lost 25 pounds, got him into position to be here in this game. Lafreniere puts on a show early. Alexi Lafreniere, number one ranked, has scored in the first period and team White leads. Anytime Lafreniere gets the puck, you have to be aware, not just because he's so dangerous, but he's such a good playmaker and has such creativity that he makes those on the ice with him dangerous as well. Well, on this particular occasion, a little shimmy shake, that opens up the gap, and from there, Lafreniere takes it through neutral ice. There's the shoulder check right there, and that opens up a little bit of a lane, forces Putio to pull the stick back, so there's a clear lane to the net. And what does he do? Even while going that way, goes back up against the grain to beat Gould. Lafreniere with the 2-1 goal for Team White. Just keeps putting up points. He's the leading point getter in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League with 73 points, averaging over two points per game. So he left for the World Juniors and still is leading the QMJHL in scoring. They're taking a look at this goal. It could be offside, they're thinking. Looks as if Jake Neighbors does a good job running into Seth Jarvis. Right side of your screen, number 21 in red is Jake Neighbors. Number 24 in white is Seth Jarvis of the Portland Winterhawks. Lafreniere is yeah. looking. You got to be kidding me. And if you know neighbors, there was a little bit of intent in making that happen. There's no question about it. 
Yeah, that that's veteran, part of his game. That veteran move might have worked here. And the captain Alexi Lafreniere, the MVP of the World Juniors, get another look at it. Left side of your screen this time around. And Neighbors does a great job looking off as if he's going into the middle of the ice. Knocks Jarvis away and into the zone. They waved it off. Aha. Veteran move there, Jake Neighbors. <laughs> so Alexi Lafreniere has not scored yet. Yet the key word. Good. Ridley Gregg comes back, gets it on the stick of Brian O'Rourke. Trying to go up the middle. Too many Team Red players there. Sent in by Dawson Mercer. Byfield, he throws his weight around. Puck comes to Forrester, and he'll flip this up in the air. Chasing after it is Casper Pudio. Started the year with Swift Current. Recently got traded to Everett, and he's seen kind of the same boat as Dawson Mercer. He'll have to get to know his Everett teammates soon. Puck drop back for Byfield. Trying to work in close quarters. Ryan Orwark staying tight. Forrester comes in to help out, and Greg will take this puck to center. There's a hit thrown by Pudio into the shift for Greg. Sabrango recently just turned 18. Tempted to go straight up the middle with that pass. And Team White read it well. It was Brandon Coe of the North Bay Battalion. There's an opening for Mercer. Long shot. Alibi might have got a piece of it to keep it out of his neck. Yeah, you see Gooley step up on neighbors there, and that allowed an open lane to get that shot on goal. Marco Rossi. He's the other player in this game, averaging over two points per game. Leads the Ontario Hockey League in scoring. Austrian import. His second year with the Ottawa 67s, who happen to be on a nice roll. Top team in the Ontario Hockey League right now. Oh, nice move to the inside. Got around Poirier, and the one-time pass didn't work. Yermer Pitlick was set up for it, but it wasn't in a great spot. Perfetti intercepts. Tempted to go up high, missed. Jack Thompson, he plays with Sudbury. Perfetti spun, and his pass got to the line. Thompson a shot, and it's caught by Brock Gould. Thompson, a good skater, so he in Enables himself to hold the line there and allows him a shot on goal. Marco Rossi has just been on fire. Points in 19 of his last 20. The tone of 45 points, I believe it is. 2.3 points per game. And some pretty good company there in his under 19 season. Puck comes to the front of Team Red's net. Lucas Cormier, Timo Nickel. They throw it back and forth. Nickel also from Austria, and we're going to get our first penalty of this game. And Will Cooley is a big body. He's a really good skater here for Team White. He'll end up going to the box here, trying to finish his check behind the net. Cormier moved that puck, and the two or three seconds later, it was big Will Cooley with the penalty. This power play is brought to you by Canada Life. Canada Life is proud to be an official sponsor of the CHL. Face off won by Jean Luc Foody, so Team Red can get set up. Lucas Cormier. Pass down to Justin Sorda. Sorda to the Vancouver Giants from Surrey, BC. Drops it back for Timo Nickel. He'll stop at the hash mark. Sorda down low, cuts to the front of the net. Couldn't get it past Halibut. Nichols stops that clearing attempt by Team White. Back behind the net for Sorda. Checked by Christopher Setoff. Kept in at the line. Lucas Cormier must have a baseball background. Jean-Luc Foody creeps a little closer to the net. Shots off a leg. Pass across for Nickel. Had to take it off the boards. Cormier. Another pass for Foody. Just missed that. Ozzy Weisblatt. Who won a championship with Prince Albert last year. Spent some time on the power play of the Raiders last year as a 16-year-old. Was giving his teammates some looks there. Timo Nickel of the Drummondville Voltageurs getting the opportunity to play in that 1-3-1 one, one along the half wall. So they move it around the umbrella quickly. Cross ice feed missed by Foodie. But then Nickel picks it up as the lane opens up and gets a shot on goal before the stop. Antonio Strongis, that was deflected by Big Jack Finley in front of the net. Tough save by Halibai, but he made it. Sabrengo, he came down from the blue line to make sure that puck stayed in. Finley 
Gets it back to Sabrango and hollering for that pass is Casper Pudium. Sprunges. 45. Top of the circle. Now a little deeper. Looks at the blue line. He'll bounce that. To Pudio, who walks across the line. Now he sends it back to Strunges. Good pass saved by Halibai on the short side. Not out. Team White killing this penalty, and they are a tired group now. Good passing by Team Red. Pudio fakes the shot. No lane. Strunges. That's blocked. Got to the front of the net, and Cole will lift that up high on the back end, and that allows the penalty killers to get a change. Pudio will end up going to Everett after this game's over, and he might get an opportunity to play some power play minutes there. Gianni Fairbrother. No! Jake Neighbors, Edmonton Oil King. Ripped around for Mercer. Penalty's over. Will Cooley is back on the ice. Buck gets centered to Byfield. He was on his backhand, so he couldn't shoot it quickly. Greg. Tempted to go wide on Drysdale. Again, another good defensive play by Jamie Drysdale. And now he's shifted to offense. Leading the rush for Team Red. Long shot. And at the top of his crease, Sam Hellebuy makes that save. Game is tied at one. So many great names here in their draft year trying to help their stock. Back in Hamilton with Dan Marr, the director of NHL Central Scouting. Dan, just one of the many events that punctuate your life as the head of Central Scouting. Uh, for people out there who might not actually know what it is and what it is you do, please explain. And NHL Central Scouting is a service department for the 31 NHL clubs. And our, our primary uh, resource to the clubs is providing them information when it comes to tournaments, uh, events, player injury, players, suspensions, schedule changes. That type of information where we're timely getting it to them. We provide a ranking. Our staff is a little bigger than a lot of clubs, and we have full time and regional staff throughout North America. So we really help in the identification process of prospects early in the year. And then we, we do publish two rankings. Our midseason ranking just came out, and we'll put out a final ranking. And these are just a, a, a recommendation from us where the NHL clubs do consider the players. And the final piece that we do for the clubs is we administer the NHL scouting combine. And that's a big part of the scouting calendar. RJ and Sam, I'm going back up to you. You think your plate is full. Just look at Dan. Oh, yes. Busy, busy guy. Always walking around with that notebook. Yeah, there'd be some wisdom in that book. Mercer. Hard pass to the front of the net. Byfield was searching for that loose puck, but it's Lafreniere who has it. Got a crafty pass to Maverick Bork. Bork, 10th in QMJHL scoring with Schoenigan. Bork sends it to the corner. Jake Neighbors. He'll have to hurry. Lafreniere closing on him, so Neighbors leaves his left wing side, tries to bring it out in the right wing, and it works. Little help from Mercer. Jamie Drysdale. He tried to dump it in. It was knocked down by Schneider. Now Quentin Byfield drops it back for neighbors. Mercer tried a shot, and Gooley got in there and knocked the shot out of play. Good job of the bump at line. You look at Dawson Mercer, and what a rise to prominence for this young man. 30 goals last year with the Drummondville Voltageurs, and he said, you know what? Yeah, I did it on a really good team, and a lot of people thought it was the result of him being on a good team. So he went into the offseason and said, you know what? I'm going to train and I'm going to prove to everybody that I did this on my own accord. <laughs> and he's done it again, so much so that he's a big piece of a trade to Shakutami. Jack Quinn to his 67's teammate Marco Rossi. Perot, he was ready for a shot, but the puck went back to Cormier at the blue line. That got through his screen. Halibai spotted it and redirected that rebound past Rossi. Shot from the line. Nickel puts it right on goal. Two Austrians out there together for Team Red. Greg tried to go cross ice. Marco Rossi, good eye hand coordination. Sends it to Cormier. Takes his time, waiting for everybody to catch up. Jack Quinn along the boards. 30 goals in 38 games with Ottawa. We asked him about the goal per game, and he said he is definitely not thinking about <laughs> that this year. Sabrango breaks up that team white chance. Jacob Poro stops as he gets inside the line. Was looking for a trailer, but Jack Thompson got his stick in the way. Foody. Working hard in the corner. He's cut off along the boards by Big Luke Kokoff of the Calgary Hitman. 
Volkov will probably be starting to put up higher offensive numbers as he jumps into the play there. In the process, knocking the stick out of Sabrango's hands, but Yegor Zamula, the big Russian import who is the offensive defenseman on Calgary, is hurt, so Volkov is expected to get a lot of that extra offensive time on the power play. And just another injury for Steve Hamilton and the Calgary Hitmen. They'll be dangerous if and when they get full lineup to play on a consistent basis. Good for Prokop in his draft year, though. Adding some offensive numbers never hurts. He's big, strong defensive defenseman as well. Five and a half minutes to go in the first period. It is 1-1, the Kubota CHL-NHL. Top prospects game on Sportsnet. Marco Rossi is the fifth ranked player by National Hockey League Central Scouting and it's mostly because of how smart he is. The hockey IQ, we'll give you a couple examples of it. Here he's in the right place, picks up the puck, looks around, assesses his options, makes a good pass. Now he goes to the front of the net, but he stops net side. Why? Because he knows the rebound's coming there. Yeah, it was deflected and a good job by Gould to get it out of play. Then he sends it back to the point after looking off in the corner. So three really subtle plays to show just how smart this guy is. Oh yeah, and he's got a bit of skill too. You want to try and exit the zone? No thanks. I'll knock it down, regain possession in neutral ice. An excellent, excellent player, this Marco Rossi. And you know, he has yet to make his mark in this game, but it's coming. You know it's coming. The leader in the Ontario Hockey League in points. Prokop sees an opening, skates it to center ice. That'll be right in on Brock Gould. Leaves it for Jeremy Poirier, and he's under pressure immediately. Cole Perfetti knocked down that pass. Finley able to get it to Drysdale, and Finley outmanned. Prokop keeps it in. That's a low shot. Might have been wide of the net. Gould got a pad on it just to make sure. Luke Evangelista, the London Knights. He walked right in and just missed on the backhand. Evangelista, he's the lone Team Red player in there. And Ryan O'Rourke, he was able to win that battle. Cole, he falls as he connects with Strongest. Finley made a good move, left it for Strongest, retrieved it behind the net, and you'll see that. The 10 and 2, the Mohawk. Strongest so good at it, and he picks up speed doing it. Fourier tried for his second of the game. Alibi may have got enough of it. Fourier looks to the front of the net. He'll just fire the puck there. There was lots of traffic going there. And Jeremy Fourier came back, took it away from Cole. Quinton Byfield. That's off a stick. That'll send Drysdale back. But Team White is on a chain, so lots of time. That's what fatigue will do to you. Cole was tired. That's why it was an easy stick lift by Korea. Caden Gooley, terrific skater. Second ranked right. defenseman among North American skaters, according to Dan Marr and Central Scouting. Neighbors. Light pass ahead allowed Mercer to skate into it, but Gooley stopped him right at center. Forced him right back to his own blue line. Great gap control. Nice step up by Gooley. You got to love it. Neighbors, he comes over to help out. Ryan Francis throws a hit. Braden Schneider, he plays with Prince Albert. Gooley is... Rather, Gooley plays with Prince Albert. Braden Schneider is from Prince Albert. So a PA connection in... A uh, roundabout sort of way. One time attempt off a stick, missed the net. Short side chance for the defenseman, Lucas Cormier, who sensed an opportunity and jumped into the play. Cormier knocks that puck down. Maybe another chance for Cormier. That time it's off a leg. Francis taken care of in the corner by neighbors. Mercer checked by Schneider. Thompson fell, and that allowed Rossi to close immediately. Maverick Bork skates the puck out of trouble. All he could do is dump it in, and Jack Quinn gets possession back for Team Ray. Pedal, pedal. Rossi, rink wide, saucered it perfectly to hit Jacob Perrow. Good defensive play by Seth Jarvis. Jarvis able to walk almost to the net as Casper Pudio stuck his stick in there and knocked it away. Long shot from the line. Gould made the save. The rebound's there, side of the net. And Gould has it. 
A good back and forth between these two hockey clubs right now. You get a look at Seth Jarvis from Winnipeg. He plays for the Portland Winterhawks and a guy who really benefited by having Cody Glass with him last year. Glass also a Winnipegger and a guy who plays with a long stick like Jarvis and said the tutelage that he gave him has really helped him along this year for the red hot Portland Winterhawks. Hard to believe that Jarvis is the only Manitoban in this game. So he's representing Manitoba and that's a pretty good representative. It's been a pretty good hockey hotbed for the Western Hockey League over the last few years. Here's Rossi coming out of the corner. Maverick Bork making sure he didn't get a chance, but he did anyway. And that's some fantastic passing. It went Rossi to Perot, and the goal scored by Jack York, Jack Quinn of the Ottawa 67s. It's 2-1, Team Red. Absolutely brilliant. My goodness, this thing looks like it's on a string, and it starts with a good forecheck. Quinn dislodges it. That allows Marco Rossi to use his body to shield the puck. He cuts off the boards, looks for Perot, and everyone in the world, including me, thinks Perot's going to shoot because that's what he does. Instead, backdoor Jack Quinn. That's a tap in. They don't get much easier than that. And Jack's done a whole lot of that lately. What were you saying about Marco Rossi getting involved? <laughs> yeah, it was just a matter of time. Brilliant. Well, that line's found some chemistry. All OHL, two 67s and a sting. And they sting Team White. Connor Zeri, Kamloops Blazer, he's from Saskatoon. Back to O'Rourke, and puck gets elevated high off the glass. Greg Batten for it there. Weisblatt, he couldn't get it out, and Zeri finding some space. Saw that O'Rourke was going to jump in the play. Tyson Forrester checked before he could get it to the front of the net, but he had help, and here's Zeri. Oh, that's a great save. But Gould came over and took it away from the extremely dangerous Connor Zeri. Great job, Gould. Oh, Forrester. There's Zeri again, and all he can do is look at the rafters. Here in Hamilton, a couple of great chances for Zeri, but great goaltending by Brock Gould. Oh, he's all smiles. Shane Farkas, who's his former teammate in Victoria, is the goaltender of the week in the WHL. And as a result of a trade with Mo uh, Moose Jaw sending Braden Tracy to Victoria, Gould was the big return for Alan Miller and the Moose Jaw Warriors. You get a little sense as to why. Final 45 seconds of the first period. Gooley no. handled that well. Pass was in his skates. Quickly got it to his stick and dumped it in. Nichols' pass anticipated by Perfetti. He intercepted it. Nichols got to Perfetti quickly to get the puck back. Evangelista. Very quiet attempt. Cormier has been jumping into the play. He knocked that into Team White's end. Strongest. Loose puck behind the net. Finley. He's a... Big body to handle, and Gooley had him marked behind the net. Now Gooley's going to jump into the play. Saw that Cole was up ahead, but Cormier, who's been jumping in himself, was back defensively. Cole. It's wide on Nickel. Stationed in front of the net was Pitlick, but there wasn't enough time for Cole to get it there. And Team Rand leads after one. Yeah, really impressive first period of play. We saw a couple of bumps. We saw the ability for goals to be scored and taken away, and some of the top players really making an impact through the first 20. The defensemen getting things started, Jeremy Poirier and Caden Gooley, and then we thought Alexi Lafreniere had a goal that was ruled to be offside. And Marco Rossi, no stranger putting up points. He was the one that orchestrated that go-ahead goal late in the first period. Setting up Jacob Perot, who then quickly got it to Jack Quinn. And that's how we sit after a period. The talent on display, an entertaining first period. And let's go down to the bench. Here's Tara. Thank you, RJ. Caden, you get your team on the board. Uh, does that allow you to breathe a little bit easier? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, getting the goal out of the way is, is uh, definitely huge. But, uh, you know, just happy to uh, tie the game up. Uh, for the boys, sir. Your brother uh, is a prospect with the Anaheim organization. He went through this game in 2015. What words of wisdom did he offer to you before this? Yeah, he just told me to have fun. Uh, meeting a lot of new guys from uh, from around uh, Canada, and um, just told me to be the player that got me here. Don't try to be anyone that I'm not. So uh, just 
taking those in this game today. Have a great rest of the game. Thank you. Jeff, we head back to you. Tara, thanks very much. Jack Quinn ending up as the uh, goal scorer at the end. You know, for kids that think that you have to play AAA hockey all the way, Jack Quinn played double A until a minor midget. Coming up in the first intermission, Stan Bowman, Chicago Blackhawks general manager, Jeff Jackson from Wasserman Orr. Two to one, red. Two to one, Team Red here at the first intermission in downtown Hamilton. You know, at an event like this, you'll see plenty of parents, you'll see plenty of agents and scouts. But how about skating instructors? Every junior hockey player has one. This is Lisa Clark. Now, she skates players like Jamie Drysdale, who you see tonight, Cole Perfetti, Luke Evangelista, and Brandon Coe. So why shouldn't she be here tonight to see some of her students? She also skates Shane Wright of the Kingston Frontenacs, who was last year granted exceptional status into the Ontario Hockey League. Welcome back to the rink. Jeff Merrick alongside Colby Armstrong, Todd Warner, and the general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks, Stan Bowman. You know, just watching the, the players, whether it's warm up or the game, and watching Lisa Clark skate with the guys, I come to an event like this, Stan, and I always ask the same question. Where did the bad skaters go? <laughs> yeah. Is that the new benchmark right you here. have to skate like? Yeah, they're with me. <laughs> Is that the, the, the new benchmark for, for playing in the NHL? I think that's the one thing that's really uh, changed over the last probably 10 to 15 years. It's the, the amount of focus the young players do to work on their skating and their skills. I'm amazed watching these young players at the age of 10, 11, 12, the things they can do with the puck and the way they can skate. So. I think that's one of the reasons you see the NHL dominated by young players now is they're so talented. They've been training for years and uh, they're fun to watch. Well it's a perfect tee up for for my question I guess <laughs> to talk about Patrick Kane you talk about skating. Uh, how big of an influence three cups with you guys in Chicago most points in the decade they're retiring as uh, Jersey in London but what influence do you think he's truly had on the young players now all growing up going man I grew up watching Patrick Kane. It's funny you know, interviewing guys at the draft and one of the questions they always say is yeah he's the guy I emulated growing up. <laughs> we had that last year with Kirby Doc and some other guys we've drafted and they look up to him and now they're teammates with him. So I think that's it goes to show you how it kind of comes full circle. But the amazing thing about Patrick is just how he keeps getting better. Uh, it's unusual for players at the age of 30 to have their best year ever but Last year he was his best season and this year he's on pace almost to pass that again. So he works so hard on his game and I think you know he's an incredible talent. There's no question but the, the amount of effort he puts in every summer he comes back with a new wrinkle in his game and he keeps getting better. So that's great for the Blackhawks. I want to ask you about your relationship with your dad and, and how he I guess groomed you for the job and, and your relationship now as he continues to work for the organization. Well I was pretty fortunate as a little kid I would hang around the rink all the time and I remember those days when I was it was before the internet and before you could <laughs> yeah. look things up I would just kind of lay in the background and listen to what my dad would say and I'd ask him a lot of questions and I always thought I'd find my way to hockey somehow and wasn't a good enough player to make it. Uh, but now he's still with us I still talk yeah. to him all the time he's an advisor for the Blackhawks and it's been a dream of mine since I was little to work with him and. Uh, it worked out great so he watches the game he's sharp as ever uh, he could tell you the, the top power plays in the league he knows all the details and we pick his brain all the time. That's awesome. Who needs Wikipedia when you have Scottopedia <laughs> either a phone call or just a casual conversation away. Uh, Stan best of luck the rest of the, the season with the Chicago Blackhawks on a nice three game winning streak we should point out as well that was a big win last night against the Montreal Canadiens. Best of luck the rest Thank of the Thank you I appreciate it. Stan Bowman of the Chicago Blackhawks we step away briefly when we return Jeff Jackson of Ora Wasserman in moments two to one red. Your work never really stops. The jobs may change with the seasons, but the need for power, performance, and affordability doesn't. Right now, it's the perfect time to get a great price on durable, quality Kubota equipment. Upgrade your landscaping, construction, or farming equipment and attachments, and get what you need for the months ahead. Because work never stops, and neither does Kubota. See your local Kubota dealer today. 
And as Jeremy Poirier of the St. John Sea Dogs opened the scoring to make it one nothing. Team Red admired Eric Carlson. Now he says, I'm a big fan of Thomas Shabbat. Another Sea Dog. That's Caden Gooley. His older brother with the Anaheim Ducks organization tied things up at once. It was all about the defenseman early. Right now, 2-1 to one, Team Red here in the first intermission. Jeff Merrick alongside Colby Armstrong, Todd Warner, and former NHLer and former OHLer, now turned super agent with Wasserman or the one and only Jeff Jackson, who's the smartest guy in here because we're, he's wearing a scarf and we're all freezing. In a game like this, Jeff, where you're all these kids, whether it's you know clients like yours, Drysdale, Byfield, etc., everybody's getting advice. Advice from parents, advice from coaches, advice from media. You need to stand out, you need to do something. What type of advice would you give your clients that are playing in this game? To tell you the truth, uh, having gone through it uh, as a player and Dave Gagne, one of my partners uh, as a longtime NHLer, we don't over we don't overanalyze it with the kids. We just say go and have some fun. It's just one more game. It's a body of work that really matters for you. Uh, don't get caught up in a game in January meaning a whole lot. I mean, there's lots of scouts here, but there's lots of scouts at every game that these guys play this year. So uh, rather than put more pressure on them, we try to take uh, take the pressure off of them. So, for example, Quinton Byfield here tonight. Um, obviously a high draft pick what's it like now for an agent representing these kids in their draft year especially such a high pick like that it seems like a crazy schedule never mind their regular season yeah i mean we've had the good fortune now over the last few years of having kids like aaron necklet and connor mcdavid go fairly high and have the same amount of attention that a quinton byfield has maybe maybe even more yeah. and um so it's really managing their time. They, they have a lot of uh, media demands. The teams are really, uh, they're, they're really interviewing the players a lot. Like after every game, they want to sit down and talk. So that's one of the biggest thing that I do. I don't really coach them on the on ice stuff. It's more managing the off ice and trying to keep them away from too much media and too, too many interviews to tell you the truth. Yeah. Let's talk about parents. And I've coached minor hockey, and I know it's a it's a big thing. The relationship that you try to foster with the parents before you get to the kids. Yeah, that's a big part of it. A, a good example is Jamie Drysdale was playing in the game tonight. We we met early on with his parents without Jamie, uh, probably you know four years ago, and um, developed a relationship with them. And now it's it's a you know a full a full fledged friendship in many ways and they rely on us but we've gotten to know the family and that's the case with a lot of kids just like Byfield uh, spent a lot of time with the family they depend on us and and uh, they're like family to us and we treat the boys like they're our boys so uh, that's an important element of how we we act with our kids I have to I have to hand it to you Jeff I remember a very specific phone call you called me one day and you said Jeff get in your car meet me at the Hershey Center in Mississauga I'm going to show you the future of hockey and that was Connor McDavid. Good on you, great call. Future of hockey on display here tonight in Hamilton as well. We thank Jeff Jackson from Wasserman Orr. We will hear from one of the pieces of the future, Quentin Byfield with Tara Sloan when we return to Hamilton. Welcome back to the first Ontario Center, CHL NHL top prospects game presented by Kubota. Jeff Merrick along with you, RJ and Sam in the broadcast booth, Tara Sloan hosting ringside. Just a quick little recap of a pretty eventful first period that had a challenge in it. Alexi Lafreniere's goal disallowed. It was all about the defenseman early. Jeremy Poirier of the St. John's Sea Dogs, he makes it one nothing. Caden Gooley of the Prince Albert Raiders, he scores his first, all about the defenseman. And then Jack Quinn of the Ottawa 67s makes it a two to one red. And that's where we are right now in anticipation of the second period. Before we get there, here's Tara Sloan with Quentin Byfield. Hey, Quentin, your team is up by one leading into the second period. How has the game felt to you so far? Uh, I think it's it a bit slow as a feeling out process. Um, you know, we're playing with every new guy here. Uh, but as the period kept going on, I think we uh, find our mojo, we started getting our chemistry. I think we started taking it to them there. You're from Newmarket, so this is practically a home game for you. I know how much family means to you. Who has come out to support you tonight? Uh, I know my, uh, I think my whole family came out. Uh, my Oma, she made the trip down too as well. Um, you know, I saw a lot of people out here just come out supporting me, and uh, I have to go uh, say hi to them after the game. I got a couple friends here too. Best of luck. All right, thank you. RJ and Sam, back up to you. All right, Tara. Sam, let me ask you. 
Quinton Byfield, over six foot four. Currently, he said he's 220 pounds. Figures he could play at about 230. His frame could hold that. Now, you get a centerman, close to 6'5", 230 pounds. That's pretty attractive for an NHL team. No question. So, yeah, Lafreniere separated himself with the World Juniors, but you might get into a situation circumstantially that says, hey, this is something that we need to address. And the team looks at that size down the middle of the ice who can do all things. They might be leaning the way of the queue. Lafreniere has played three years in the QMJHL. This is Byfield's second in the Ontario Hockey League, that late birthday of Lafreniere. Snyder tried a short pass. That didn't work. It was read by neighbors, and he's hungry for the puck. Throws it back to the blue line. Drysdale quickly across. Poirier trying to do what he did in the first period and open the score. Could not get it past Sam Halibai, though. The Sherbrooke Phoenix goaltender made a good save. Cooley's pass. That was too hot for Vasily Panamarev to handle. Here's Poirier. The Sea Dog will have to circle back. He's teamed up with Jamie Drysdale. Talk about an offensive defensive duo. Both have 35 points. That gets Poirier ranked number three in the Q among defensemen and Drysdale number nine in the OHL among defensemen. Lafreniere on the ice now. Dumps it in. Brock Gould. Gave it away and then he had to make a good save. So that was almost a dream start for Seth Jarvis and Team White, but Gould's come up with some big saves in this game. And this one uh, as a result of his own miscue, and that's one of the things, you get into these games and you want to make sure that you're communicating. You look at players that have gone first and second out of the CHL in the last 10 drafts. Fischer Patrick, Ekblad Reinhardt, Yakupov Murray. Paul and Sagan was one that was well documented in the battle that was fought right to the end. It reminds me a little bit of the one we're in right now between Byfield and Lafreniere. Cormier dumped it in. There's Perot. Rifled it through the front of the net. Cormier. He jumps in again. Covering up for him at the blue line is Jack Quinn, who has scored. Got past the first wave of defense at Team White. Circles the net. Holds onto the puck. Leaves it for Nickel, who gets crunched by Christopher Setoff at the Red Deer Rebels. Setoff, an import from Finland. Couldn't get it past Perot, but now Team White. Led by Alexi Lafreniere. Tried to get some offense going. They didn't click. Perot, middle of the ice, and Cormier he is not afraid oh, to man. turn the rush. He has been everywhere in this game. But they're caught now. Tyson Forrester shoots and scores. The Barry Colt has tied the game early in the second period. Talked to Warren Reichel, his head coach at Barry, about him the other day, and he said Forrester has a variety of shots, a lightning quick release, and he can score in an abundance of ways. Well, he proves it on this break. Good head manning by Zary. Look at how quick it goes up the ice. Zary looks ahead. He assesses that he's got Forrester there, and Forrester says, I know I can shoot it. I'm not even looking, boys. I'm taking this one myself. And does a great job to go on the short side. He has got it picked. And he buries it, but it all starts with a good outlet pass from the top by Ryan O'Rourke. Team White has iced the puck, so this faceoff's coming back to their end. So many great offensive players in this game, so the goalies have their work cut out for them. No question. The guys are putting up a boatload of points all over the place. And Gould and Gould now for Moose Jaw, still with his Victoria equipment to trade is so fresh. Forrester, he will turn 18 on Saturday. He's got a birthday coming up. Another puck sent down the ice. Donovan Sobrango bothered by Forrester. Jean-Luc Foody got it as far as center. And now it's knocked out of play. Really good job here. Team White on the change, and that allows their players to be out behind the play. So O'Rourke head mans it to Zeri. Zeri looks up. He says Forrester's there. Lafreniere is there. Forrester saying, hey, dude, you're number one. I'm not there yet. I'm taking this myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you got no higher to go. You're there. <laughs> yeah. I got to improve my stuff. Good thinking by Forrester. Poirier and Drysdale. Forrester at 41 in the central scouting rank. Braden Schneider, watched by Strontius, got it to go. He shovels it over to Caden Gooley. Gooley also will turn 18 on Saturday, so both he and Forrester 
That birthday's just around the corner. Cole had an assist in the first period. Got it back to Schneider. A low shot. Gould, no problem. Strongest, Finley, they're both in the corner. Huck stolen by Perfetti. Right on his back is Poirier, but somehow he was able to set up Cole with a shot. Gould chunks up another save. Poirier behind his net, and it is a penalty coming up yep, to yep, Team yep. White. So Gould will join his teammates as they head up the ice. That long change for Gould, that just turned into a skate for him. That'll be a slashing call in Yermer Pitlick of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. And it was interesting to talk to him this morning as he's trying to chase down. Oh, and he knocks Evangelista. But Pitlick said, yeah, man, last year I go to Sault Ste. Marie halfway through the year. I get to play with Barrett Hayton. He's in the show. I get to play with Morgan Frost. He's in the show. Then I go play with Jakob Lavko. He gets hurt six seconds into the World Juniors. It feels like everyone's deserting him. <laughs> Good start for the penalty kill of Team White. Gould had to play the puck. Francis was in there quickly. Fournier up ahead for Quinton Byfield. This is a power play for Team Red. Jack Thompson rips it along the boards. Fournier got his body in front of it. Timo Nickel passes cross ice and it wound up on the stick of Mercer, but he was in too deep to shoot. Back to Cormier at the blue line. The Charlottetown Islander threw it to Byfield, got it back, and Halibai makes the save. I feel pressured and Team White able to work together to get it down the ice. Jack Thompson the one to get it down on Brock Gould. Formier moves it into Team White's hand, but the penalty killers were able to converge on him and knock the puck away. Now it's the center. Poirier has to hurry. He knows Maverick Court can be dangerous. Got it to the front of the net. Poirier made sure just to have enough angle on him that he couldn't get right in front to get a great shot. And one thing they say, Dan Renault, the head coach in Shawinigan, talking about Maverick Fork's work ethic, and it almost led to a goal there. Jacob Perot, he has put up a ton of points with Sarnia this year on the power play. Didn't get a chance there. Just over 30 seconds to go in this man advantage. Luke Prokop. Quickly on the loose puck, he sends it down the ice. Prokop is just over 6'4", is the tallest defenseman in this game, but that's just average height on the Calgary Hitman blue line. They got a ton of tall defense. Big boys over there. It's Good. been a tradition there in Calgary. Though. They like the big guys in the back. Sure has. John Luke Foody, not a lot of time to go, so Team Red will have to hurry, and Ozzy Weisblatt can do that. Warrior. Whoops. Tried to get it to Drysdale. And Lafreniere with good eye-hand coordination knocked it down. Gould has to play this puck. Pitlick coming out of the penalty box was searching for that. loose puck never got it. There's a big hit. You knew Lafreniere was going to make his presence felt physically, too. Big bump on Poirier. No prisoner. It's a huge part of his game. A lot of people don't expect it, but that secret should be out now. Lafreniere has done it enough. And he can shoot it, too. <laughs> That got to Gould in a hurry, and he fought it off. Knocked it out of play. Quite an efficient 30-second shift for Alexi Lafreniere, the Ruski Oceanic. 73 points. Had three points in his first game back from the World Juniors. Poirier moves the puck, but he falls victim to Lafreniere's hit, who then gets back into the play in a short time thereafter, and the Ozone gets a good hard shot on Gould. Zary, Finley, Kamloops, Spokane on that faceoff. Angelista up to his London Knights teammate Antonio Strongis. Strongis was stopped by Setoff, who's had a physical game for Team White. Finlay comes into Ridley Gregg. Forrester's right there to clean up the puck, make sure Team White kept it. Casper Pudio. Also an import of Finland. Two Finnish imports, two Austrian imports. Slovakia, Czech Republic, and Russia. Odd man chance, led by Antonio Stranges. He takes the shot and missed. It was targeted for the short side on Halibai. Nickel, an attempt. That was deflected, and Halibai stayed right there. Made that save. Stranges spank to the blue line again. Cormier, wrist shot. There it is in the glove of Sam Halibai. A busy section.
for the Sherbrooke Phoenix goaltender, but he kept it out of his net. Tyson Forrester of the Barry Colts has tied the game. Alexi Lafreniere leading the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and there's been so much hype surrounding this player as a late birthday. So you look at some of the players before him from Quebec since 1970 have gone first overall, and it's been a long time. The province really proud of this young man. He's won a gold medal with Canada, was the MVP there, and doing amazing things for Serge Beausoleil and the Ramouski Oceanic, and it looks as if he might be added to that list. Yes, he has been. Fantastic all three years with Ramuski. The reigning CHL player of the year might win it again. Nickel. That shot got deflected up high and just did go over the glass. Well, the rookie of the year a couple of years back. You look at Timo Nickel, the drum of Bill Volkers. I really like this game. We saw him in Ramuski a little earlier this year. And a good opportunity for him to get caught up with Marco Rossi. Which was nice to see the two Austrians. My first game back in 06, Michael Grabner was the feature yes. Austrian player. Deflected puck, just missed. Talking to Marco Rossi, his favorite player, and he didn't hesitate. It's Pavel Daxer. A lot of similarities in the game between those two. Yes. 48. Tried to make a quick pass. Perfetti was right there. Got it to the front of the net. And another great opportunity for Team White. Pitlick was in tight and brought Gould. He's had to make some tough saves. And he might be playing the whole game. We suspect he will after that injury to Nico Dodds. Well, he's got to get a little helmet adjustment here. Pitlick doing a good job on the forecheck. That's one of his fortes. He's played center and wing. And then he drops back, goes into perfect position. Gould is in position as well. It doesn't know exactly where it is, but it hits him before getting the stoppage. Puck just sat there for a moment after the faceoff. And Sabrango, Ian Ponomarov reached for it and it got knocked out of play. A yeah, really good interview. The Shewinigan star, Ponomarov, was excellent at the World Junior A Challenge. And you know, got off to a bit of a slow start in Shewinigan, but that World Junior A Challenge really put him back on the Mac for first round consideration. He is a rock. Oh yeah. And when we talked to him, Sam, he admitted he was fat to use his words growing up, but nobody thought he'd go far. He had skill, but he was overweight. He's changed that. One of the three people want wrong. Got into nutrition, weightlifting. Jack Quick. 30 goals with Ottawa. Fired that one a little bit high. Marco Rossi stopped it along the boards. Ponomarov moves it away from those two dangerous 67s who are out there together. Ryan Francis had Will Cooley ahead. Quick turn for Jacob Perot. Got it back to Sobrango who's jumped into the play. Perot somehow spotted Rossi heading to the front of the net. That shot gets deflected up over the goal. Lafreniere, nice move at the blue line, got away from Nickel. Lafreniere trying to toe drag. Sabrango played him well. And he didn't get a scoring chance. Set off. Here's Maverick Bork. Stick handling, but he lost it. Seth Jarvis. Quinn. He'll go up against Set off. Cuts to the middle. Quinn still has the puck. And he looks at all five members of Team White were there. Ozzy Wiseblatt quickly hustled to add a little support. Lafreniere races to center, moves it past Nickel. Jarvis starts in the corner. Here's Justin Sorta. He tries a fancy move, but Jack Thompson didn't bite. Wiseblatt down to Foodie. John Luke Foodie did great in the testing. No surprise after his brother Liam a few years ago. Blocked the testing and wound up going 18th overall to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Another shot attempt that is off a stick and out of play. Yeah, he comes from pretty good bloodlines. His uh, dad, Sean, won a great cup of BC back in 1994, and his mom, France, part of a 4x100 silver medal winning relay team in the 1984 Olympics. And yes, we've heard 
Those same stories going back to his brother Liam, who was selected 18th overall by Columbus a couple of years ago, World Junior Gold Medalist. And John Luke starting to turn it up in Windsor for Trevor Lukowski. Finley intercepts the puck. Big six foot six forward. This will be lifted up in the air now to race for it. Is it enough for icing? It is as Poirier just gets there ahead of Zeri. A couple of words by the Kamloops Blazer Zeri and Jeremy Poirier of the St. John Sea Dogs. And a little bit of a dust up in back to back games for Zeri. Only a couple of line brawls the, the other night. And that is a rivalry <laughs> that is alive and kicking. And it goes back years, but really reignited last year in a tie breaking game, which Kamloops beat Kelowna 5 1. Old school WHL. Old school is right. Here's an opportunity. Ryan O'Rourke jumps into the play. New he had support behind him. More great passing. They score. Tyson Forrester, his second of the period. And Team White leads. And this is one of those typical new age goals. And the rush is initiated by Ryan O'Rourke because he does a good job killing the play in his own zone. And then Takes off with the puck from there. He's looking up. He's checking to see who's with him. It's one drop pass, two drop passes. Zeri realizes the whole time that Forrester is the man trailing. The one touch, two touch, three touches. Back of the net, nighty night. The Barry Colt has a deuce. So there is a goalie change coming up. Dylan Garan will come in for Sam Halify. We'll tell you more about Dylan Garand of the Kamloops Blazers when we come back. We are back in Hamilton with the first ever full time president of the CHL Dan McKenzie and Dan I have to ask you you come from NBA Canada. Why is this a job that you wanted to take on. Well I mean I, I'm a Canadian kid. I grew up in Guelph Ontario a, a fan of the storm at the time and uh, this was an opportunity for me to really get involved in a sport that's obviously really important to Canadians and a sport that is rooted in some pretty neat things. I mean we give junior hockey players in Canada a great hockey experience the best hockey experience in the world at this age but then also an educational and a scholarship uh, component that's second to none so how could you not want to do something like that and this looks to be a banner year at the NHL draft for the CHL um, talk about those successes and this event in particular well that's what tonight's all about right it's getting a chance to see some of the kids that we're going to hear their names uh, in June and um, it's just super exciting a great game tonight the crowds full in Hamilton the Hamilton's done a great job putting on this event and um, you know let's just hope for a good second half of this game. And what are you looking forward to in the future as this job for you continues to grow. Well you know I've had the opportunity over the last few months I've been this is my fourth month on the job um, and I've had the chance to go across Canada and really hear the passion of fans in terms of some of the things they want to see and some changes and some opportunities they want to see us take advantage of in the CHL. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time in the next few months on that. Nice to talk to you Dan. Thanks Thank so you much. Thank you very much Tara. Thank you. And Jeff we head up to you. I'll take it Tara as we talk about a goalie change that has just happened and Dylan Garan the 17 year old from Victoria BC the Kamloops Blazer goaltender he has been busy this year he's played the most minutes in the WHL and he's won the most games 23 of them and he is a focused young man 17 year old who is really into fitness and his diet. Very strict, hard to do as a teenager, but he does it. He's into hydration, loves his water. And won't have puppies or anything like that. Teammates like to have a little fun with him, but he's able to ignore that and stick to what he wants to do. Good on him. That fitness will pay off. Here come those London Knights. Eventually, he's doing strongest, but they didn't get far. Great defensive play by Schneider. WHL defensive duo out there Schneider and Gooley tough to get many chances when they're out. Oh tried to find something on the short side and if you're wondering why there wasn't a change in the other end Brock Gould still remains in so we've got two WHL goalies in each end but Nico Dawes of the Guelph Storm was injured in warmups upper body injury so it's Brock Gould's net for Team Rat. Really good opportunity for him to take advantage of. Being able to play the full 60, it just doesn't happen. Dawson Mercer 
That pass is off his skate, but Neko follows up. Jake Neighbors trying to center it. Will Cooley of the Windsor Spitfires. Moves it just outside the line. Cooley and his Windsor teammate Jean-Luc Foudy are ranked 20 and 21. So they're ranked back to back, and they're on opposite teams here today. So they're really trying to get that rivalry going between those two. Lucas Cormier. He has skated well, missed some time earlier this season due to injury, but looks great tonight. He's moving well, block shot. In 17 games. Jack Thompson, he jumps in, Potamara, and he's got a great shot. Fired it quick, but Gould was in a good spot to make the save. Well, Tyson Forrester, the Barry Colts, has had a real rise to prominence this year. And a part of the reason why is his ability to shoot the puck. And here, this puck gets up ice in a hurry. It's essentially a two on O. And Forrester says, Lafreniere, forget it. I'll take it myself. And here, the excellent passing play ends up on Forrester's stick. Four good touches there before he scores. Marco Rossi came back to help out defensively. Poirier tried to advance it along the boards. Maverick Bork knew exactly what was happening. O'Rourke, long shot. There was a screen, too. Gould makes that stop through some traffic in front. Ryan O'Rourke, the captain of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Good job by Gould. I think that's one thing that's pretty neat for a young guy to be able to play 60 minutes, you can kind of settle in there, settle into your game. Luke Kokop made a move at the line, couldn't get the shot through. Bork steals it. Hard backhand pass, Lafreniere didn't have much room. That was Drysdale in tight to him. But no doubt the scouts want to continue to see defensive play from Drysdale, and he has not disappointed. When you put up a ton of points as a defenseman, sometimes you get labeled that more offense. You're the, you're the new age guy, but that's surely true for Drysdale, but he's an excellent defender. Lafreniere moves it to Bork. There's Drysdale. Through a hit. A lot of time here in the offensive zone for Team White. That one's deflected, and Team Red needed that whistle. Looked a little bit like we saw in the first five minutes in this game where Team White was going low to high, D to D, getting plenty of shots, getting a lot of retrievals. And Fourier for Team Red, and here's Prokop's latest attempt. Lafreniere on the drive through almost got a tip on that puck. Well, it's funny talking about defenseman putting up a lot of points. Prokop kind of a different. Schneider, hard shot, there's a good save. Kind of labeled as a defensive defenseman, but we've seen his offensive side in this game, Luke Prokop. The ability to add that to his game. Turnover, Forster passes over, there's another goal, and it's a defenseman goal. Braden Schneider, the Brandon Wheat King, adds to the total for Team White. Well, that group out there has really been getting it done. You look at Schneider, picks up a goal. Gooley, who was out there as well. Had a goal in this game. Forrester's got a couple. He'll add an assist to his resume here. Pudio does a good job trying to rush man and off of puck. But a great recovery here by Team White as Zeri, who's got that excellent vision. I mean, he's net side and he doesn't even think about going to the goal. He thinks about moving this puck to Forrester, opening up some space, and Forrester gets it to Schneider for the finish. That's three points in this period for Connor Zeri and Tyson Forrester. They have taken over, and there's always some good stories that develop. That line has been a force. Cormier trying to get something back here for Team Red. Luke Evangelista working hard along the boards. He couldn't get an inch away from setup. Evangelista, another crank at him. Oakville native, he's cut off by Cole. Here's Cormier. Great shot in on Dylan Garand, who's now in goal for Team White. A quiet first few minutes of his appearance, but finally gets a shot. That's a nice way to ease in the game when you've spent half of it on the bench. Garand in the goalie scrap the other night in that Kelowna Kamloops dust up. Then they're trying to go through the crease to create the screen. Jake Neighbors. 
Got it to Mercer, and he could not get the shot away. Cole Perfetti. Pass comes up ahead for Yaramir Pitlick. There's Neighbors, likes that physical play. Stop Pitlick immediately. Poirier. Jamie Drysdale. Some open ice ahead of him. Hard pass. It's right in front of Team Red Bench. Pitlick intercepts the Sioux St. Marie Greyhound. Gets it to an open side. Now Setoff will have to retreat. Get it to Jack Thompson, Sudbury Wolf. Dawson Mercer. Only Newfoundland representative in this game. Jake Neighbors, Edmonton Oil King, top team in the WHL right now. He tested Garand. Nothing doing for Team Red again. Casper Pudio. We'll bring this into Team White's end. Brokop slowed him down. O'Rourke separated him from the puck. Two defensemen working well together. Brokop was able to head man it. Panamarov. His pass was off his skate. And Sabrango. He jumps into the rush. One thing that's really stood out to me, Sam, is the defensemen are jumping in and creating a lot of offense in this game. Yeah, they've done a great job of that. With Cormier, Sabrango, Bluely, Schneider, it's been all over the ice. Pudio. Behind the net, Perot, a quick pass. That wound up on the stick of Marco Rossi. Couldn't get it past Garan. Prokop, double team. Sabrango keeps it in. Kitchener Ranger defenseman, tough angle there. He tried it anyway. Quinn wraps it around. Perot's open in the corner. Jacob Perot tried to center it. Rossi comes to the front of the goal, takes a look. No lane there. Holds on to the puck. He's patient. And Nickel was creeping down to the back door. The two Austrians, that would have been big for them if they had it connected on the goal. Nickel a shot. Grand in a good spot. Cormier. It was just deflected. Didn't get to Quinn, but he has it now. Team Red trying to cut into this lead. Quinn fakes the shot, takes the shot. O'Rourke fearlessly blocked it. Francis. Just look for an opening to get it to center. Long change here for Team White. Only Will Cooley gets to the bench. Perot tries to go rink wide. Garand scrambling, but again, Team White able to defend. They did not let that shot through. Francis gets around Nickel. Does he have room to tuck it in? Can't get it past Gould, but a great burst of speed by the Cape Breton Eagle, Ryan Francis, to get that chance. And he got a tired Nickel, and he knew it. Took advantage of him, cut the corner on him, took it wide. But Cool did a good job going post to post. Foody. One of his assets is speed, and Lafreniere was right with him, stride for stride. Bork takes a look. Lafreniere was open for a moment. Sort of made sure he didn't get the puck cleanly. Has it now. Nickel, exhausted, tried to throw a hit, and that didn't even phase Lafreniere. Now he's working against John Luke Foody. Caden Gooley, Maverick Bork. Lafreniere, shot blocked, and Nickel was quick to react and move that puck out to the neutral zone. He's got to try and get off the ice. He is dog-tired, Nickel. Can't do it, though. He's still out there. Lafreniere shields the puck away from Drysdale. Here's Seth Jarvis. Saucers it in front for Gooley. Save made by Gould. Sort of. Finally sees an opening to hit this puck out, but now Team Red has to be careful. They just got back on side. Foodie is shot. That's off the right arm of Dylan Garan. Sort of. Can't connect with Ozzy Weisblatt. There's two minutes to go, second period. The Kubota CHL NHL top prospects game. Bank pass with Quick quick move, and he couldn't keep the puck with him to tuck it in. Evangelista. He stopped by setup. Puck gloved ahead. Team Red got the next touch, so play continues. Drysdale. Open man is Evangelista. Stopping at the blue line. Finley had no choice. Evangelista loses a hit from Greg. He's had a physical game for Team White. After a big hit early in the game, that helped him get engaged. Evangelista is still behind the net. Nobody was open in front for Team Red. Pudio passes in front of his own goal. Poirier 
Banks it ahead for Evangelista. He has to go back to Poirier, and Forrester, who has two goals in the period, was hovering around. Evangelista stops and shoots a low one. No problem for Durant. One skill Evangelista's been working on are those cutbacks, and it opens up a lane for him to get a shot. Perfetti. He's watched by Stronges, and he spots Jerry. Oh, just offside. There was a change going on at Team White's bench. It had the makings of a fourth point this period for Connor Zeri. Gould makes a big save there to keep his team within two. I don't know how many people live in Alliston, Ontario, but I can tell you that a good chunk of the population is here tonight to watch Tyson Forrester. 46, in fact, including Tyson's parents, Glenn and Sherry, Sister Callie. Sherry, I'm going to start with you. Your son has scored two goals tonight. How are you feeling before that, and how are you feeling now? A little better now. I was really nervous before the game, but a little pressure's off now, I'm sure. <laughs> Now, Glenn, not all parents sacrifice their basement for their kids, but you did. In fact, you painted lines on the floor so Tyson could play hockey. Tell us about the famous Forrester basement. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a full-size rink painted on the floor with net at each end, and we just recently actually took the two nets out of the basement. They had flattened sides on each side from the amount of pucks that the kids shot in the basement, so it's pretty cool. Well, it appears to be paying off tonight. Have fun, you guys. Thank you. RJ and Sam, back to you. Yeah, yeah. There's always a path that leads to the success. <laughs> yeah. And so far in this game, Tyson Forrester, who's ranked number 41, has to be helping himself with those two goals. He's also had an assist, so three points. Yeah, he's made a lot of noise from the start of the year forward. I think it started in the playoffs last year, and it's carried forward with Warren Reichel's very cold so far this year. Down to the last 40 seconds of the second period. Team Red have got it in the offensive zone. They'd like to get something going. Team White has been very good in this period thanks to Zeri and Forrester who each have three points. Brandon Coe drops it back for Perfetti. Quinton Byfield is their time for a chance for Byfield, the number two ranked skater. Perfetti. He came back in the number four ranked player. Made a good defensive play. Here's Byfield again. There's only five seconds to go. Perfetti, a second effort. Knocked it to the corner. Team Red will have to shoot quickly. There's the shot. It missed. So a tidy half period for Dylan Garand, who came in for Samuel Halavai. And Team White has extended their lead with pretty impressive period. Well you have to love this game because every now and then you get a player like a Naden Dudas who steps up and uh, might be a Laurent Dauphin as we saw in Halifax a few years back and tonight it looks like it's the Tyson Forrester show the Barry Colts. Always fun to see who has a big game at the Kubota CHL NHL top prospects game 4 2 after 2. Jeff. Your RJ big second intermission is on the horizon. A couple of NHL general managers, Ron Francis, Seattle GM, will join us. But up next when we come back, Pierre Dorian. Big year for Ottawa at the draft with two firsts. The Ottawa Senators general manager joins us next for two team wins. A highlight real goal, albeit one that was called back. A big hit against Jeremy Poirier of the St. John Sea Dogs. It has been a big game so far for Alexi Lafreniere, the consensus number one prospect in pretty much everybody's draft rankings. As we welcome you back, it is 4-2 Team White right now. Jeff Merrick alongside Colby Armstrong, Todd Warner, and the general manager of the Ottawa Senators, Pierre Dorian. I love seeing you at rinks because you're always smiling. We know your background is scouting. You feel very comfortable here. Just seeing uh, Alexi Lafreniere on our screen there a couple of seconds ago, and I see an even deeper smile on your face when you see that player. But I'm curious, put on your scouting hat here, Pierre. How many tiers do you see in the top 10, the top 50? Where are the drop-offs? Well, obviously, there's probably two or three guys at the top of the draft. That's up for debate. Obviously, a lot of people feel there's a clear-cut number one. Uh, he'd look great in a Senator's uniform next year. Uh, and then from there, I'd probably have to tell you from what I've seen, and I've seen a lot of the guys in the top first round or in the top 30, that probably another drop-off around 20. 
And then from there, I would probably have to tell you from about 20 to 60, it's a very good draft. It's one of the better drafts that our scouts feel in a long time. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have probably six run uh, six picks in the first 60 or so, so we uh, or 65. So we feel we're going to have a pretty good draft this year. Uh, speaking of uh, good picks, uh, Thomas Shabbat for your Senators. Um, we saw him a few years ago at the Memorial Cup uh, in Windsor, and we we're thinking, man, this guy, this guy's going to be an NHL player. But Thomas Shabbat got comfortable very fast in the NHL, didn't he? No, I think it's uh, he just got comfortable fast for the simple reason he skates so well, he thinks the game so well, everything comes naturally for him. I think when we moved, uh, you know, when we moved Eric Carlson, it gave him a really good opportunity to step and be our leader on our defense. And now he's not just a leader on defense; he's a leader of our team and leads the NHL in time on ice yeah, right. per game as well. He's logging some big minutes. So let's yeah. talk about your coach. Um, the trend towards younger coaches in the NHL and a guy that's no stranger to junior hockey DJ Smith just talk about his impact on your young team well right from the interview uh, when we did the interview both uh, Peter McTavish and myself we just felt right away he knew that Peter knew that I love DJ right away because we started talking salary in the first interview so we knew he was <laughs> going to be a good fit and then uh, from there we did a second interview with him we just felt it was the right mix you know we're going to be a younger team for the next few years we're rebuilding he understood junior hockey he understood dealing with the new millennials sure. even though he's old school in his ways he knows how to communicate and he's what people don't know about DJ is he's into analytics which for someone who probably is not the he's very street smart but probably not school smart yeah. and um, he's very in analytics he's adapted to the game he's learned from great people and he was just the right fit for us in the rebuild that we were going in the direction we were going it just felt it was the right fit for us you know I'm really curious you have two first round picks yours and San Jose's and the Eric Carlson deal with two first round picks are you someone that says with my second pick I can go for a long shot the first is going to be the first wherever you end up settling with the second pick do you feel you can not be frivolous but be a little more risky with it it's a very good point actually but in this year's draft there's like we feel the top 20 is really outstanding that if you're sure that you're going to get a star i don't think you can make that gamble now it depends where san jose finishes most likely then it will have to weigh our options but there are certain years that you ha if you feel you have a pick in between 20 and 31 or 20 and 32 in the next few years that you probably can make that gamble but this year's probably a year where there's too many good players that you probably can't afford to make that high risk pick understood and a lot of really good young players on your team that story has been well told i understand you're off to scout europe in a couple of days a 10 15 day there is no rest for the <laughs> for the scout pierre dorian no no we're just uh, leaving to go to europe i'm going to go see all the top end europeans in the draft see him play once or twice so um, it'll be a good trip for us. Look forward to, uh, to talking to you when you get back. Pierre Dorian, the general manager of the Ottawa Senators. As we take you to break, we saw Alexi Lafreniere. There's consensus number two, Quinton Byfield. Double nickels, Sudbury Wolves. Your work never really stops. The jobs may change with the seasons, but the need for power, performance, and affordability doesn't. Right now, it's the perfect time to get a great price on durable, quality Kubota equipment. Upgrade your landscaping, construction, or farming equipment and attachments, and get what you need for the months ahead. Because work never stops, and neither does Kubota. See your local Kubota dealer today. Tyson Forrester with two goals for the Barry Colts. He puts Team White ahead 4-2 after 40 minutes of play. Jeff Merrick alongside Colby Armstrong, Todd Warner, and pleased to be joined by former Sault Ste. Marie Greyhound, now general manager of Seattle. I, do I call them NHL Seattle, the Seattle 32s? I know that's still to be decided, Ron Francis. You mentioned you played for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. That is in the early 80s. When you look at junior hockey now, Ron Francis, what goes through your mind? Well, I just think that the, the way the game has evolved is so much faster now. The skill set of some of these kids is so incredible that, uh, you know, they do things in a game that we don't even think about doing, you know, back in that era. So it's exciting to see the game progress in that manner. So no team yet. Uh, you're in the process, all this stuff. What does Seattle, you, take away from a game like this? 
Well, I think for us, we have nothing, right? So we're trying to build a book on everything from NHL players to AHL players, the players that have already been drafted that are prospects of other teams to players who will get drafted this year, just in case we get down the road and we have to make any kind of trains. We have some knowledge about what we're talking about in regards to these young players. I want to ask you as an old school guy, old school Hall of Famer, uh, the storm surge, the Svechnikov goals, all the new unique things in the game. What do you think about them? Well, I, I think the Svechnikov, I mean, that kid is extremely talented oh, yeah. to do what he's done, especially the cross style goals. I mean, that's that's very exciting and very entertaining. Um, I am a little old school when it comes to the storm surge stuff. I'm usually not there at the end of the game when those are taking place. Right. <laughs> but you, but you are a progressive thinker, and we know that Dre Bruckheimer is one of the owners of the Seattle franchise. I would imagine that what Seattle is going to present, I don't know if it'll be really different, but it will be different than what we've seen in the NHL so far. True or false? I, I think that's a true statement. I mean, some of the things they're talking about, some of the things they're trying to work on. Uh, if we're able to pull them off, I think it'll be a fan experience unlike anything else, not only in hockey, but maybe around the world. So it'll be exciting to be a part of that. When are you allowed to sign players? Yeah. I, I don't think we're recognized by the league, and I can't go to gym meetings till we make our final payment, which will be hopefully in March of uh, 21. So I think like you, you were talking to us about the rink there. Let me explain. You guys are in the process right now of, of getting your rink ready, and, and it's quite a undertaking from what I understand. So, so they took the old key arena but the roof was a federally historic landmark structure so they kept the roof in place. They've, they've torn everything else out. They've dug down 70 feet on both sides of where the floor was. They're doubling the underground space from 400,000 square feet to 800,000 building a brand new state of the art arena from the ground up and the existing roof will sit on top of that new structure with a new HMO front. It's absolutely incredible project. Seattle so, fans. Well, where is this tree you're pulling all this money off of? <laughs> it's not in my backyard, I can tell you that. Ron, thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah. Enjoy the three periods. Uh, best of luck the rest of the my way. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Ron Francis, Seattle general manager. Big period for a Barry Colts. Tyson Forrester with two goals, 4-2 Team White. RJ, Sam, Tara, next. Now it's time for the Kia CHL Top 10. Kia powering the future of hockey. And usually when we do this segment, Sam, we go through the top 10 teams in the Kia CHL Top 10. These are your top 10 CHL players for the upcoming draft. These are your rankings on sportsnet.ca. What really stands out to me when you compare them to central scouting is you've got Marco Rossi a little bit higher than central scouting does. They have him behind Jamie Drysdale and Cole Perfetti. So why do you have Marco Rossi so high? Well, I just think it's the smarts. It's the creativity. It's the ability to play a 200-foot game. And you can do it from the center ice position. You can do it from the wing. He's really that all-around guy. And we've seen parts of his game come into fruition tonight. It's just how smart he is. He's in an area where he can get the puck. He circles back, finds an open man, knocks down a puck in the middle of the ice. And his play makes those around him better. That's what you're looking for from players not just a good player himself but making those around him better and I thought he's been a highly effective player evidence on the goal where he was able to draw the assist with his teammate Jack Quinn picking up the goal but there's so much to like about this guy skating oh, checks a lot of boxes now Jamie Drysdale with what he did at the World Juniors that wouldn't be a bad pick either but I tend to have Rossi elevated as I have most of the year. Uh, above uh, above the crowd. Well, it'll be great to see how it all plays out. The top ranked right winger is Jack Quinn. He's with Tara. Well, you talk about Jack Quinn, you talk about Marco Rossi. Usually you don't talk about you two on the same line. How nice is it for you guys to share this and share a line tonight? Yeah, it's pretty cool, obviously, just having someone to come to this event with and, uh, you know, our room with them at the hotel and to play on his line. I think we have some good chemistry, so it's, it's nice for sure. What happened this year? Last year, 12 goals in your rookie season. You've got 30 goals so far with 30 games to go. What's up? Uh, I don't know. I think just uh, I had a good off season, um, good training, and um, my line's playing well. The team's playing well. I think me and uh, Mitch Holscher have some good chemistry, so uh, I think it's just everything's going well right now. Jack, thanks for this. Thanks a lot. RJ, back to you. All right, Tara, Mitch Holscher, a New Jersey prospect, and one of those under-the-radar guys that's Probably going to find his way into the Devils lineup in the next year or two. You know, I was talking to some of the Devils people before the game, and they're really happy with the progression of Holscher. He plays a pro style of game. Good face off guy. Yes. Yeah, really like. Good. Third period. 
Kubota CHL NHL top prospects game. Last chance for these players to help themselves for the upcoming draft in this game. Team White had a great second period, scored three times, and lead 4 2 as we're early in the third. Lafreniere was stuck. Mercer had trouble controlling the puck, had to slow down. He spotted Poirier. Shot in on Dylan Garand, who has been perfect since he came in midway through the second. Dawson Mercer. Pass got all the way through to Jake Neighbors. Garand might have got a piece of that, too. But how did Mercer find oh, a seam to get that to Neighbors? Thread the needle or what? Here's Neighbors. He's got a step on Lafreniere, who's catching up and now has the puck. Good in the backtrack. A complete game for Lafreniere. And right there is Marco Rossi. He got in front of Lafreniere. Team Red has it. Lucas Fournier. Team White forces him back. Picked up speed. Thought he'd have an easy entry. But this line has been very good for Team White. We saw it defensively. And we've definitely seen it offensively. Ridley Craig sidesteps a hit. Kept in at the blue line by set off. Now it's a race for it. Prokop is... Coming off the bench, and he gets the puck, trying to use that long reach. Couldn't get it past Brock Gould. I love how assertive the defensemen have been on both sides in this game. It's been great to watch. Shows the how the game's evolving, too. Teams want defensemen joining the rush. So tough to score five on five. You try and create odd mans with that defenseman getting into the play. Forster. Barry Colts leading score, three points in this game. Left the puck there for defenseman Luke Kulka. Now Forster has it. Donovan Sabrango, the Kitchener Rangers, stopped him there at the line. Sabrango has it now. He'll go rink wide. Pudio doesn't want to shoot at the net. Got it in the vicinity of Perot. Now Perot's in a pretty good spot. He might stay with him. The pass intercepted by Zeri, who also has three points. Forster, hat trick. No, not going to happen that time. Sabrango got back. Just a little bit of indecisiveness on the part of Forster. He didn't want to say, hey, take the hat trick and couldn't decide. By that time, Sabrango got back. Cole Perfetti stops, got away from Weinsblatt. There was Foodie trying to throw a hit, but Perfetti somehow saw it coming and sidestepped that too. Perfetti right along the blue line. He's controlling play right now. The oh, Whitby native. Tempted to go back to the line. Sort of. Just got it outside the defensive zone. Ryan O'Rourke, he's got two assists in this game. Good. To St. Marie Camp. The silly Panamarev. He knocked that puck out of play, so that will stop play. Yeah, good start here to this third period and a couple of good chances. We've talked about the defenseman being assertive. Oh, yeah, what's Poirier doing through neutral ice? Good dipsy doodle there and a sharp save on the left pad by Grant and a good job by Thompson who helped affect that shot as it came right across for an excellent opportunity for Jake Neighbors of the Edmonton Oil Kings, but Thompson did get stick on stick on him to take that chance partially away. Off the face off a chance. Brock Gould. The Moose Jaw Warrior goaltender. If you've seen a few close-ups, you might see Victoria Royals on his mask, and his equipment indicates that too. Recently traded to the Warriors. Need a little time to change up the goalie gear. Schneider. His first shot was blocked by Strongis. Francis with the puck in tight. There's Jeremy Pickwick. Another Greyhound. Jamie Drysdale, right-hand shooting defenseman to Poirier. Drysdale gets it back. Looking up the ice. Didn't see anyone open. Poirier. He'll track it to center. Duran Comrie gets it over to Braden Schneider. Quick shot from Cormier. That missed connecting with Evangelista. Timo Nickel. He's escaped to keep the puck in. And now Antonio Strunches has it. Saucer to the Cormier. Team White seems to have everything blocked in front of their net, but there is a penalty. They'll go to Cormier. He was in there trying to be creating some offense for Team Red, and he ends up getting the stick up into the grill of Braden Schneider. Bob Wilson, the head coach of the Peterborough Peets, and there's Cormier with that stick up in the air. Schneider checks his chicklets. Quick count. Most of them are there. So 
Fournier, who he's been all over the place in this game, the Charlottetown Islanders. Jim Halton, the head coach over there, uh, sitting in the box for Team Red. Power play for Team White, trying to add to their lead. Alexi Lafreniere, but he scored. They reviewed it. It was an offside. So here's the captain of Team White, the number one ranked player, Peyton Gooley, top ranked WHL player. Full Perfetti. He's so crafty. In front of the net was Jarvis. There's Zary, Lafreniere. All these players, key parts of their team's power play. Lafreniere tried the shot. Perfetti comes up with a little on the board, spins and sees Sobrango there. Jarvis realized he needed help, so zipped into the corner. Three penalty killers are there, but Team White got the punch. Zary trying for a fourth assist. Saw Lafreniere open, could not get the puck to him. Just over a minute to go in this power play. Lafreniere waits. Now everybody's good to go. Julio got his stick in the way. That's another clear for Team Red. Maybe a short added chance here. Dawson Mercer and Caden Gooley knows that he's got a great defensive side to his game. With some bite. Lafreniere is still out there. Drops it back and Perfetti just missed. Here's Brighton Schneider. He's scored in this game. Lafreniere down low play. Tried to get it in front of the net to Will Cooley. Could not make good contact. Schneider, 25 seconds to go in the power play. And that's cleared by Jeremy Poirier. Wise, quick clear by Poirier, the St. John Sea Dogs. And I could sense there were some good things cooking for Team White. Cooley will have to go back and get this puck in only a few seconds to go. It bounces right in on Garand. And he had to make another good save. Kicking those pads out was Dylan Garan, the Kamloops Blazer. Got busy there at the tail end of the power play, which is now done. So Team Rat, they killed it off, and Cooley tried to throw a big hit. Last block side coming, there's going to be a fight. Donovan Sobrango, Kitchener, against Will Cooley of Windsor. Sobrango got loose from the rights now. They both got the rights loose, and both landing. Sobrango loses the helmet. Still tries to swing a couple. They're sticking with the right hands, these two. Yeah, that'll be it. A little congratulations from both of them. But that's something we haven't seen for a while at this event. It used to be a mainstay. There'd be a fight or two. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, those two teams were involved in some fisticuffs the other night. It was actually Will Cooley going up against newly minted Kitchener Ranger Sarah Noel. So there's the big hit attempt thrown by Cooley and Sabrango comes over there in the penalty box now. The first fight at the Kubota CHL NHL top prospects game in six years just happened. That's Donovan Sabrango of Kitchener Rangers and Will Cooley of the Windsor Spitfires. And they acknowledge each other at the end of that one. A fighting man's honor between the two. Will Cooley, a really interesting guy, had a dynamite year last year, 26 goals with the Windsor Spitfires as a 16-year-old. It hasn't gone quite as well for him this year, but he's starting to get back on track. Those two also fought on January 6th, so not that long ago, 10 days ago. Plus a year. So it was 2019, so pretty much a year ago, so I don't know if it's going to be an annual thing between these two. <laughs> Check the middle of January 2021. Just under 13 minutes to go, third period. Team White in control, Team Red trying to creep back into this. Booty. He's battling, and all that hard work by Jean-Luc Foudy has paid off. It appears that a penalty is coming up to Team White. And so often you see that in the defensive zone, and Jean-Luc Foudy is getting stronger, playing well of late. Christopher set off of the Red Deer Rebels going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Foudy. Foudy ends up going to the ice. 
Connor Morrell comes in to clear the puck, but at that time it's too late and set off will join Will Cooley in the team white penalty box. Puck sent into team red in. Casper Pudio trying to spin away from trouble and that's Connor Zeri who has three points in the game doing a pretty good job of the penalty kill too. Prokop gets in the way. Ridley Gregg up to Zeri. He'll skate to center. Had to take a hit from Cormier but he got the puck deep into Red's end. Antonio Strongis. Got those great edges. Didn't use them that time. And a little too much on that pass. Poirier couldn't get there in time. Jeremy Poirier, third leading defenseman scorer in the QMJHL. Finds a seam to get it into Team White Chance. Braden Schneider, Caden Gooley back there. They have been a great defensive duo and have both scored in this game, too. I've really enjoyed Caden Gooley's game here at the Prince Albert Raiders. He's been good in his gaps. He's killing plays early. He's using that great skating ability. He's done so with some bite. And on the other side, we've seen Jamie Drysdale of the Erie Otters do his thing with his elite feet. No shots on this power play. There's Drysdale. Drops it back. Poirier, hard pass. Received by Neighbors. Poirier's in position. Drysdale has it. There's a shot. Duran fought it off again, and he didn't know where it was. Good news, Team White has it. And Prokop has it clear. In fact, it almost turned into a chance. It just bounced on Seth Jarvis. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Britton Byfield's out there now. He's the captain of Team Red. Number two ranked player in the upcoming draft. Byfield found Mercer and he gets hit by Gooley who came over and made sure Mercer didn't get a shot. Well I loved it. I mean he just looks squarely in the chest like you taught as a youngster. Takes man separates him from puck. Lucas Cormier. Last couple of seconds of this power play. Poirier tries a shot and Dylan Garan catches it and stops play just as the penalty expires. That's one thing about Grant pretty picky about his glove and he talked about different angles of gloves that he's tried to use and he's really settled on one here. You can see why he's so highly thought of by NHL Central Scouting. You know the difficult thing is when you're under 6 2 often you don't even get looked at by a lot of NHL teams but he's been sharp. Jack Green takes the shot. Where do you sit on that? The big goalie. Will you consider a smaller goalie? Well, the percentages say that that's the thing to do, but I just want a guy who stops the puck. <laughs> Period. End of story. Yep. The Michael DiPietro type. Puck stopper and a winner. Duran. He's stopped everything so far since he came in midway through the second period. That was the plan to split between he and Samuel Halavai of Sherbrooke, who's had a great year in the QMJHF. Puck gets to the front of the goal. Brock Gould trying to come over. He can't get there in time. Ridley Gregg put it into the net, but it's waved off immediately. Gould may have been obstructed in his crease, but there was no hesitation on that, and Gregg didn't even have time to lift his arms in celebration. And the muted celebration, if you will. You see Gould's just inside of the blue paint of the arch around and then interfering in there is Pitlick. Pitlick wears number 26. He's leaning on Gould. That impedes his ability to get over to the glove side and that's why it was such an easy tap in for Greg. Gould just had no opportunity to get over there. Second goal in this game that's been disallowed for Team White. Lafreniere in the first. It was reviewed. It was offside. This one it was quick immediately waved off half a period to go two goal lead for team white Cole Perfetti will have to regroup at center Brandon Cole skating well down the right wing side tried to center it Foody intercepts he's from Scarborough got it to sort of back to Foody Windsor Spitfire drops it off for the Vancouver Giants sort of 
Tough to contain back there. Pudio. He tried to pinch. Perfetti got the puck. Now Palomarov tried to battle his way through the middle of the ice. Wise player. He took a hard hit. That time it was Cole throwing it. Really good hometown hockey feature in the Weisblatt family. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, check it out. Tyson Forrester is on the ice. He's got two goals in this game. Strunches. He can be very dangerous if he has a little bit of room. Forrester slowed him down. Then the support came, and Team White defended well that time. Evangelista. Brought the bank for Timo Nickel. Things getting a lot more physical in the third period. Oh, I like it. Bottom line here in this game for these players. Hey, hey. Greg want, doesn't mind the physical play. Yeah, and you want to prove that that's uh, part of the repertoire. Evangelista trying to find room against those WHLers down there. Connor Zary, Braden Schneider. Forrester lifts this up in the air. Greg's behind the defense. The puck settles. And he just missed on the blocker side. Just had one disallowed and came close there. Cooley. Tried to get it past Evangelista, couldn't, but it came right back to Caden Gulick. There's Forrester. Schneider. Over to Greg. That time he was trying to pass, and he might have had an opening on that glove side had he fired it. Zeri got closed on quickly. Back to the line, Schneider. Leaves it for Gooley after he drew the defensive attention, and a long shot from Gooley is caught by Brock Gould. Seven minutes, 50 seconds to go. Team White leading by two, and thanks to Brock Gould, it only stays a two-goal lead. On the road, brought to you by Cooper Tires. Count on Cooper since 2014. This is the 25th edition of the Kubota CHL NHL Top Prospects game. There have been 14 first overall NHL picks who have played in the game over the years. 343 first round picks have played. Hamilton is the 17th different host city. And this weekend, Hamilton also plays host to the Rogers Hometown Hockey Tour. We'll be at the Morgan Firestone Arena in Ancaster. Special guests include Hockey Hall of Famer Geraldine Heaney, two-time Stanley Cup champ Marty McSorley, and Olympic silver medalist Sarah Nurse, along with her brother Hamilton Bulldogs captain Isaac Nurse. Our matchup has the Chicago Blackhawks hosting the Winnipeg Jets. Coverage starts 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, Sunday on Sportsnet. Guys? Sounds like a good Sunday, Tara. Isaac Nurse, gotta love it. Big shot win by White. Prokop. Oh boy, he saw Seth Jarvis was open, and Jarvis took a swing at it, didn't connect. Lafreniere to Prokop, up ahead for Maverick Bork. Jarvis heads to the net. Prokop jumps into the play. Ryan O'Rourke, he's watched by Byfield. Make sure to keep his body between Byfield and the puck. And Team White has been able to neutralize the dangerous Quinton Byfield so far. Jarvis steals it behind the net. There's Thompson, Sudbury teammate of Quinton Byfield. They're against each other in this game. Jack Thompson, Curtis Ontario. There's Winnipeg Manitoba's Jarvis. Check. Alexi Lacrimiere from St. Eustace. Shot game from Thompson. That was stopped by Gould. Chance to clear for Jake Neighbors. Need a little help. That was Poirier who will lead the rush again for Team Red. Set off. Pass with the skates of Marco Rossi. And now might be trouble for Team White. Quinn, he reached for it. Poirier tried to keep it in. Quinn will. Nobody in deep for Team Red, so now Seth Jarvis took his time. Rossi made sure that time evaporated. And those play disruptions are key. Set off. Brought it in over the line, and it is an interference penalty, so another power play. 
Second penalty of the game for Pitlick and Brock Gould has performed quite well in this game for Team Red getting the full opportunity with Nico Dawes unable to participate because of an upper body injury. And while it hasn't always been clean, it hasn't always been pretty, you get a pretty keen sense as to why Alan Miller, the general manager of the Moose Jaw Warriors, targeted Gould in that trade moving Braden Tracy to Dan Price's Victoria Royals. Team Red 0 for 3 on the power play. More physical play. Will Cooley in the middle of things once again. And I think that's the kind of game that Cooley has to play. He has to really be that power forward type. He's shown some flashes of in, the, of in, the, in this hockey game, but also still proved that he has the ability to score goals. Cudio brought it to center, dropped it back for Jacob Perot. Four penalty killers in a line waited. Quinn over to Rossi. Cudio. No look pass, finds Marco Rossi. He'll spin back. Rossi's patient. Cudio's open. The defenseman a slap shot. Attempted redirect by Quinn in front of the net. Rossi once again. 360. Zeri trying to stay between Rossi and the net. Donovan Sobrango. Puck rolled, no problem though. Rossi was able to haul it in. Now he's down in the corner. Passes to Quinn. Looks in front of the net. Perot wasn't open. Rossi gets it back. Quinn can't go to the short side that time. So it's back to the blue line. Pudio, Sabrango. Casper Pudio fakes the shot. Tried the shot. Zeri got right in front of it and blocked it. Donovan Sabrango. Here's Rossi. These penalty killers have to be tired. That was off the shoulder of Durand and clears to center ice. Jailbreak to the bench. Schneider was unable to get to the bench. Quinn still out there. Cole was fresh though. Knocked the puck away before Quinn could shoot. Rossi took a swing at it, but again, those sticks of Team White in good position. And it looks like Team White is going to kill off another red power play. Good job keeping it to the outside. Shot suppression. So back to five on five. Four minutes to go. Third period. Two goal lead for Team White. So Team Rand has to get going here. Ozzy Weisblatt, Prince Albert Raider, two of them in this game. He and Caden Gooley both won a WHL championship last year with the Raiders. Really valuable experience in your 16-year-old year to be able to do that. You're so much better off for it the year you come back, and they've been great for Mark Hatchup. Proton. The Ryan O'Rourke, good communication, and that was food. He took a long run at O'Rourke. Repelled it quite well. Almost like it didn't happen. Yeah. No problem for the Sault Ste. Marie captain. So another minute slipping away from Team Red. Now they have to worry. Potomarov, nice spin move. Tried to get a bank in front of Perfetti. Set off, low shot that missed. Perfetti with a steal. He's got some dads who get him too. Yes, you do. Look at the puck, it just stayed with Perfetti. He was in a sea of red. Strunges stops. And now he's giving it away. There's Perfetti and going to the net. Was going oh -ho! Perfetti hit the post. And now it's put into the net by Cole Perfetti. He had to do it with a little more degree of difficulty. But he does get the empty netter. I think he was trying to get the assist off the post. <laughs> That's two points. <laughs> Poor Brock Gold, he's played well. The officials are getting together now. They're trying to get this thing sorted out. There's a little bit of uh, Keystone Cops on his part as they tried to get him out of the net to erase this two-goal deficit. Perfetti wide open net. He's looking up. He says, all right, I'll fire it right off the post. It goes. Couldn't hit it any more square than that. But he recovers quickly. And Gould is trying to get back to his net. But not going to work. And uh, Cole Perfetti all smiles there for Team White. Perfetti, <laughs> he's impressed. That was expected. It's the point streak alive. He includes his last yes. 11 games with 24 points for the Saginaw Spirit. Yeah. He doesn't play a game without a point anymore. Goodness. And now it's a 5-2 lead, so 
Team White looks like they will capture this one. Faceoff will come back to Team White's end for icing. We will step aside. 2.29 to go. Team White doing well tonight in Hamilton. Let's take a look at the top prospects brought to you by Kubota Canada. Quality built, precision made. And we talked a lot about one and two, Sam. Well, there's two. Quinton Byfield throwing the body around. Laughing here says, you're going to do that to my team. I'll do it to you. And we've seen Byfield work hard in the four check. He's been bumped around a little bit. He showed some excellent stick skills. Well, leaned over with that short stick that he uses. Laughing here also effective in this game, creating opportunities for those around him. And you get a sense from both players that they can play a physical brand, that they can make those around them better, and they can definitely have an impact on the game as they have tonight. Maybe not to the extent either one of them thought, but still impressive. Net empty for Team Red. Why not go for it? They need three in two minutes and 20 seconds. Maverick Bork over to Christopher Setoff. Jake Neighbors got over there. Quinn. Byfield all the way to the blue line and Lafreniere knocked the puck away right there. Quinn rink wide. He's got some chemistry with Marco Rossi. He's two Ottawa 67s trying to make something happen late. Drysdale took a swipe at it. Maverick Bork has it right in front of Team Red Bench and he sends it back. Jack Thompson. Puck rolled and right there was Neighbors. Quinn doesn't shoot, passes instead. Dylan Garand, a fine save. Rebound there, though. Byfield. Marco Rossi back to Drysdale. Cormier takes the shot. That lane didn't open up. Seth Jarvis got right in front of it, and the Portland Winterhawk sends it down the ice with just enough for icing. We can really hear from that team white bench the appreciation of the block by Seth Jarvis. Byfield getting a chance to be out there as the sixth man in this empty net situation for Team Red as they try and come back from that three goal deficit. Lafreniere doing his job to try and keep the puck out of his net. Higher group out there for Team White. Here's Poirier. Takes the shot. There's Jarvis again right in front. He was ready to block another one if he had to. Lafreniere, the net is empty in that far end. Now he's way back in his own end. There's one minute Maverick Bork. Sight was a little off. Couldn't hit the empty net under a minute to go. Jacob Perot had to be careful cutting through the middle of the ice. Zeri. He made Perot dump the puck. Race for it. That'll be won by Ozzy Weisblatt. 40 seconds now, and Team Red starting from their own end. Sort of. into Zeri and they both go to the ice. Wise Black tried to center it. Ridley Gregg couldn't clear it initially. Wise Black in front of the goal. That's where Perot was headed. His stick was tied up. Couldn't get it on goal. Tyson Forrester is out there. Also Connor Zeri. Both of them have three points in this game and that's turned into a big story. They both had huge games for Team White. Given the opportunity with the empty net. Gets to the front. Dylan Garay and it's in and there may have been a little bit of time Dylan Garand had been perfect in goal and made some really good saves it really won't affect the outcome of the game team white is going to win but they will make sure that this is an official goal Sort of working hard behind the net, does a great job with his body position. The puck comes free for Dawson Mercer, and he continues to jam at it. Good battle won there by Sort of as he gets good position on Schneider. That frees the puck to the front of the net. And when that happens, there's Mercer, a couple of extra stick handles, and it ends up bouncing off the pad and in eventually beating Garan. But they're going to check and make sure that there was time remaining. Make sure that there was. No impedance to the goal. That's a little disappointing for Dylan Garand, who it's not easy to come in yeah. halfway through the game off the bench. And he played really well. Thought he was 
going to have his clean half game. That long last second. Trying to get things sorted out here at the scorer's table. So Team White had a big second period. That's the difference. They scored three times. Cole Perfetti got an empty netter here in the third period. Perfetti a couple of points in the game. Ryan O'Rourke had two points. Three points by Connor Zeri and Tyson Forrester. The Kamloops Blazer, Zeri, and the Barry Colt Forrester, and it is a goal. So Dawson Mercer gets the goal. And there will be one second added to the clock, so Mercer will be officially in the history of the Kubota CHL NHL Top Prospects game as a goal scorer. And they'll just drop this, and that'll be that. So here are the 25th. Matchup of top prospects, an entertaining game. But that second period turned out to be the difference for Team White. What stood out to you tonight, Sam? Well, I really like the assertiveness of the defenseman. I like the physicality of the game. And I like how you get that unsuspecting player who steps up and becomes a star in the game. And in this case, it was Tyson Forrester, Team White, Barry Colts. Tyson Forrester ranked number 41 in Central Scouting. So they'll be keeping a closer eye on him for sure after that performance. And those two goals and an assist. Here's Jeff. RJ, thanks very much. Alongside Colby Armstrong and Todd Warner, we work a lot with Brian Burke. And Brian always talks about guys that pop. And it doesn't have to be the headline guys. And those two were Quentin Byfield and Alexi Lafreniere. Colby, who popped for you tonight? For me? Caden <laughs> Gooley yeah. of the Prince Albert Raiders, for me, popped. He was solid, he was smooth. Look, we got a look at him at the Memorial Cup last year as well on a PA Raiders team. But for me, here tonight, watching his game, defended, solid, smooth skater, heads up, strong, played the body, was physical when he had to be, breaking up plays. Um, just a really smart, confident, good all-around defender here today, obviously chipping in with the goal never hurts but when you play as well as he did today I think with his skating the way he defended the hockey smarts the all the total package he really popped Jeff he for me tonight well done first overall draft pick of the 2017 Western Hockey League Bantam draft who was the cork out of a champagne bottle for you Todd? <laughs> well a player I was watching closely too because he plays for the Barry Colts and he had a really good interview yesterday he was a really engaging kid Tyson Forster what a night for him and maybe not Totally off the radar, really good sniper. He's kind of come into his own this year. Big kid, strong, off the rush. He lets one go early in the game and kind of feeling it from there on in. He gets in the, in the trenches. He gets a, a nice feed here on a three-way drop pass to get a second of the night. But three points for this guy, young man, and really all over the ice. And with the line of him and Zari and Ridley Gregg were really good tonight. So yeah. you said guys that pop. This kid popped and look at the smile on his face after a great night. You know, for a player like Alexi Lafreniere, who comes into a game like this as a consensus number one, you can say it's a game that he probably doesn't want to play because he can only hurt right. his stock. But I don't think he did tonight at all. Had a great goal, got called back. Uh, he played physical, so many things to like about his game. Uh, you could say the same about Byfield. They don't really get on the score sheet as much as some of the other guys tonight but they didn't hurt their stock at all, and the Frenier was solid at both ends of the ice. Yeah, and like, where we're sitting, too, is so cool because you can see everything develop for them, and uh, the what they're doing away from the play, right where we sit right here, is really neat to watch those start those big star players here tonight, how they operate all over the ice. You know, really interesting for Lexi Lafreniere. We saw the physicality of the World Junior Hockey Championships, and a lot of us cynically said, oh, that's just the Hunter influence. That's what Hunter... <laughs> Lafreniere was throwing it around tonight. That hit on Jeremy Poirier in the second yeah. period was something. He's a strong kid and strong in the battle. The goal he scored was called back, as I said, but what a, what a play to sell the shot, move to the left defenseman bid on it but uh in the battle in the cycle guys bounce off him he doesn't lose his balance he's solid he looks like a pro already well, and that's uh that's the thing about it's him. elite it's being an elite player we yeah. talk about it. You, you look at his skill playmaking skating hockey iq yeah. and then you drop a compete 
just full compete package with them as well. Not afraid to be involved physically, be in traffic, spin off traffic and make plays. Uh, and some team's gonna get lucky. That's right. Some team's gonna have an awful <laughs> remainder of the season and get really lucky. But there's the old saying, if you're going to miss heaven, don't miss it by two inches. There's a reward at one end, and there's a reward at the other. And I'll tell you what, Alexi Lafreniere is one big prize. And I come short of calling Quinton Byfield a consolation prize, because he's an outstanding hockey player, and in some other drafts, he'd probably go number one as well. Thoughts on 55 out there tonight? Well, for me, just looking at him, how big and lanky he is, and you got to think that he's only going to get bigger and fill out into that frame as well. A noticeable player, really, with his size, his reach, uh, the way he looks, just the way he looks as a player. Um, lots to work with with him. I mean, you talk about player ceilings or where they can get mm. to. I think uh, there's lots of uh, opportunity for this guy to get better and better. Todd, hold on to your thought. We're going to get down to the, uh, the rink now for the trophy presentation and PA announcer Aaron Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the trophy to Team White, please welcome Canadian Hockey League President Dan McKenzie. Alexi Lafreniere, please skate forward and accept your trophy. There we go, Alexi Lafreniere, he's been victorious. Well, listen, this has been a fantastic season for Alexi Lafreniere. It's not even close to being done. Gold, the World Junior Hockey Championships. Uh, his team tonight victorious at the Kubota CHL NHL Top Prospects game. We know what's on the horizon in June in Montreal at the NHL draft. What's going to be your takeaway from this night? We've done a number of these Top Prospect games now. I don't know that we've seen a Top Prospects game with as much skill yeah. on the ice from top to bottom That's as true. we saw tonight. What's your main takeaway going to be, well, Colby? Well, for me, I think coming into tonight, I looked at the rosters, I looked at the lineups, and I was thinking, okay, forwards. This is a lot of really high-end forwards here. A lot yeah. of skill, a lot of playmakers. Um, and for me, it was, it was interesting to see how involved the defense were today, not only producing, but being involved and active. And you look at the NHL game, you look at what these kids are watching, these, what these kids are developing into, and to talk to them and hear who their favorite players are uh, and see where the game is going. These, these D are big parts of the offense now and big parts of the game, and they were big here tonight in this game. I think the depth, well, I will take away. Like you, you were saying, like it obviously headlined by some elite players, but yeah. some lesser lights across the board. Both teams really uh, stepped up. Jacob Perot, uh, Marco Rossi, uh, Foodie had a good game. Wiesblatt, I wrote down Perfetti, uh, Forrester obviously with his two goals. Ridley Gregg, a guy I didn't know a whole, whole lot about too. Connor Zari, physical, lots of guys. Uh, Maverick Bork, lots of guys had uh, had good nights. You know what it is for me too, today here in the game, the physicality. I think you know we heard Sam and RJ bring it up during the game, just really good physicality. And as the game went on, it seemed to get a little bit more, a little bit more heated. So. Um, yeah, these guys left it all out there. And a fight. Right. And a fight, too. <laughs> Speaking of our RJ and Sam, they are our veteran CHL voices. We'll get their thoughts. RJ? Thanks, Jeff. You guys were just talking about the fight. First time since 2014, there was a fight at the Kubota CHL NHL Top Prospects game. So six years, and Donovan Sabrango of the Kitchener Rangers and Will Cooley of Windsor they had the scrap and you know Kitchener Windsor Western Conference <laughs> they'll continue that battle down the stretch here as well. We talked about what you liked about the defenseman jumping into the play. Uh, we saw a lot of that more so than in past years. Anything else stand out to you. Yeah well, I like the play of Connors there. I like Jeremy Poirier uh, goal and an assist. He's a point getter as he is with the St. John Sea Dogs. But Zary was really impressive. He's been in the top ten in scoring in the Western Hockey League most of the year. Tyson Forrester winds up with three points in the game. He will have his 18th birthday on Saturday, so that's a pretty good early birthday present. And maybe 
the best present will be improving on that number 41 ranking he has with NHL Central Scouting. Jeff? For the young man, and with that, we'll send you back to Sportsnet Central. 5-3, Team White is victorious. The 2020 Kubota CHL-NHL Top Prospects game. Alexi Lafreniere, all smiles. A lot of smiles tonight all around. Some great hockey, some physical hockey, skill on display. The CHL is back at the NHL draft. We head now to Ken Reed and Jesse Rubinoff, Sportsnet Central.